After over a month away from the rink, the chips return to action in the most unlikely of places of finding natural ice. 1,430 miles later, the chips arrive in Fort Myers, Florida, and head to the Hertz Arena in Estero, Florida, seeking a season sweep of the Eagles in a pair of games this weekend. It's the Division Three Central Michigan Chippewas and the Florida Gulf Coast Eagles. Hello, everybody. Welcome ringside from Estero, Florida, home of the Florida Gulf Coast Eagles. I'm Devin Sarah calling the first of two games this weekend alongside my broadcast partner, Reagan Cleves. And Reagan, all week we've been awing over the, 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 the sunny skies of the Florida Estero <laughs> sky, the blue skies, the nice weather coming from where we do in Michigan where it's 14 degrees. But the one thing that's at stake this weekend is this is an important game, and the players have preached all weekend that this is a business trip strictly. Yeah, it certainly is a business trip. Two top ten teams in the in the in the American Collegiate Hockey Association. Central Michigan sitting at number six, and uh, Florida Gulf Coast sitting at number eight. These two teams played earlier this season. We'll get to uh, a recap of that game a little bit later here in the pregame show. But uh, this should be a really good matchup, and this certainly as much fun as the guys have had down here. This is a business trip. And it is a business trip between the number six ranked Chippewas and the number eight ranked Florida Gulf Coast Eagles. And Reagan, the big story this weekend is the acquisition of some new talent for the Chippewas. They just acquired this weekend the transfer from Adrian Division II team, Julian Johnson. The sophomore from Woodhaven, Michigan, comes from Adrian as a transfer sophomore to play with the Chippewas. Reagan, we've got a little bit, we've had a little bit of time this weekend to talk with Julian about what he expects this season, and he has the same mentality as all these players, get to nationals and do some damage. Yeah, he's a really good acquisition, though he hasn't had a ton of games, so his point totals aren't as uh, aren't as high as you'd hope. He's only played nine games for uh, for Adrian. He's got two assists in that time, so he certainly can get points. He also, uh, when he was playing with uh, River high school with Aiden Gazdecki uh, back a couple years ago. He was a really productive player, I believe averaging over a point per game. And so we, we hope he can bring that to the table here. Yeah, yeah notable what Central you just Michigan. mentioned. Uh, alumni of Riverview High School, the same place as teammate eight, now Aiden Gazdecki, the star freshman there. And one notable thing, too, is he played in the Division II National Tournament with Adrian last season during the COVID-shortened season. Got a little bit of experience in the postseason, so he knows exactly what kind of environment is at stake and where they're chasing towards to the end of the season. Now time to shift gears to the Adrian game recap from December 11th of 2021. Now, as it's 2022, just over a month ago, and we'll start with the first period. In 7.45 in, it was Adrian getting the first goal. That was Evan Bliss from Dominic Malone getting the rebound from the right circle to make it 1-0 Adrian. And then later in the second period, they would go up 2-0. But it was Michael O'Connor scoring on a right-wing breakaway to put the Bulldogs up 2-0 Reagan. And the Chippewas, is, we're going to see here a little bit in your pregame interview with Coach Cataline that they've allowed now three straight games, allowing the first goal of the game. So not a great start for them. But just when it seemed like they'd go to the third scoreless, it was Aiden Gazdecki on a broken play, slapping it home from the high slot with just one second left in the second period to get his first goal of the season. Yeah, through that uh, second period of play, power plays for, uh, for Central Michigan. They went 0 for 2 in the first 40 minutes. And for Adrian, they went 0 for 4. So not a very good special teams now at least the first 40 minutes of play in that regard. Moving on to the third period now, Adrian uh, stole the momentum from Central Michigan on a four on four when Matthew Barrett uh, took a rebound off of the uh, in the left circle off the blocker of Thomas Rofe who had been who has struggled as of late especially in that Adrian game keeping control of rebounds and it, it bit him for the second time that night is, uh, is the rebound from the shot from the right wing circle, went right onto the stick of Matthew Barrett in the left circle, and he was able to snap it far side past Thomas Rove to make it a 3-1 game. Central Michigan would, though, get a goal back. Uh, Isaac Gibbs batted the puck out of the air at the side of the net. Uh, the assist on that goal goes to Charlie Hayes. That would bring the Chippewas back within one with at, with uh, with 8 uh, 10 left in the hockey game, but... It wasn't enough. Chip was couldn't get anything else going, and uh, the uh, pardon me, and the uh, and the buzzer would sound, and Adrian would collect a win out of the hockey game. However, once the buzzer sounded, uh, that wasn't the end of the action, as there was a massive fight after the buzzer, and 
uh, Jordan Cooper was suspended one game because of the fight, because he was involved in that fight. So he is out here tonight. Final shots on goal in that game were 30 to 30, dead even for the Bulldogs and the Chippewas. Both uh, teams went scoreless on the power play 0 for 2 and 0 for 4 for CMU and Adrian, respectively. Alternate captain Jordan Cooper will be one of the scratches for this game, a notable scratch that will put the Chippewas down, but they will have 13 forwards still skating for them with the acquisition of Julian Johnson where he will play on the fourth line. And in ACHA hockey, you are allowed to have an extra forward skating on your team, so that will put them at 13 forwards, six defensemen, and one starting goaltender for tonight. As now we'll look really quickly around the Michigan Collegiate Hockey Conference East standings. Right now, four out of the seven teams are ranked in the top 25. At the top of the standings, the Lawrence Tech University Blue Devils, who 10 games played, are 8-0, undefeated in conference play at 18 points, with an overall record of 11-5-0 and two ties. Second place, SVSU, the Cardinals, at 12 games played, are at a 5-4-1 record, overtime loss in the conference standings to put them second with just 13 points, an overall record of 8-5-1-2. And, and moving on to third place, the Adrian Bulldogs, who actually dropped in the standings after beating Central Michigan, come in there with a 9-7-1 overall record. In fourth place, CMU sitting at 3-2-0 in the conference standings. The University of Michigan Wolverines with a 2-1 record in conference play. Oakland University 1-4. Round out in seventh place the standings, the University of Michigan Flint Wolverines. We'll look, take a look, we'll now pass it to Reagan to take a closer look at the two teams playing here today. Yeah, so Central Michigan, as Devin mentioned, sit uh, fourth in the MCHC East. They got 3-2-0-1 oh, record, seven points. They sit fourth in the MCHC East. Overall, they sit 9-2-0-2 oh, with 18 points. Uh, you know, Points-wise, they sit uh, 15th in the ACHA, but they are ranked, as we said earlier, number six. Uh, they are 4-0-2 oh, on the road this season, both their time is coming uh, away from home ice. They uh, uh, they tied Saginaw Valley State 4-4 and then ended up tying uh, Calvin University 3-3. Uh, uh, three to three. That one was a great comeback by the Chippewas in the final seconds. Uh, they are 8-1-0-2 oh, in their, or pardon me, 8-1-0-1 oh, in their last 10, including a win over uh, Florida Gulf Coast on October 16th. Uh, uh, so th this and it was a competitive game, three to one. So it sh it should be a good one here this weekend. As for Florida Gulf Coast, they're ten and three on the campaign, fourteen points. They are twenty seventh in the ACHA D three. Uh, they are independent, so they are not in any specific conference. Uh, losses coming into today, they've lost only to three teams, uh, as indicated by their record. They haven't been beaten twice by any team, but they lost to Central Michigan, uh, th three to one. Dallas Baptist, five to do. That one was more of the surprising one, Devin. Uh, and then you got uh, they lost to Notre Dame earlier this month 9 to 4. Uh, in their last 10 they are 8 and 2 and that matches their record at home this season. So they've played 13 games. Their first 3 were on the road. Their last game for uh, Florida Gulf Coast came a week ago on Saturday, so a week ago tomorrow. Uh, in a shootout win over North Carolina Wilmington, it was their D2 team that they swept. And in that game, Skylar, Petting, uh, Skylar Pettengill had a fantastic performance, scoring four goals in regulation as well as a shootout goal. Now time to look really quick at the series history between these teams. The last game, as Reagan mentioned, CMU won 3-1 on home ice at Martin Ice Arena. Goals coming from Owen Campbell, Jordan Cooper, and Brennan Martin. The only other goal scored in that game from Florida Gulf Coast was Ryan Alamian, one of the notable players that was just moved up to the Division II team to help them out with their national championship campaign. He'll be replaced by number 23 over there. That will be number 23. Jacob Varro will replace him, and he'll wear that sweater tonight as we'll get to with the other notable transactions later on in the game. But since 2015, the series is now tied at three apiece between CMU and Florida Gulf Coast. But Central Michigan, however, has won the last three meetings with a plus one goal differential and every game being decided by no more than two goals. Central Michigan in 2019-2020 took on this team in Estero, Florida on the road and won both of those games in a pair by five to three. And they won the last game by two goals. So with that, it'll take it to our scratches now. 
Reagan, we'll get to you just in a moment for that one. But real quick, we'll look at our players to watch now, presented by CMHIceHockey.com. First up for Central Michigan is number four, Jacob St. Andre, through 11 games played, has five goals, seven assists, and 12 total points. Jacob St. Andre is one of the best players against Florida Gulf Coast. In three games played, he has four goals, five assists, nine total points against the Eagles. And on the 2019-2020 campaign trip alone, he had three goals, five assists, for eight total points and the win over the Eagles. He's going to be a big player if St. Central Michigan wants to have their way with the Eagles again tonight. As for the other player to watch is none other, none other than number eight slash 18, Brendan Martin. I say slash eight because on the road currently, Brendan Martin wears the number eight, the captain of the Chippewas, famous for the Chrome Dome with 13 games played, has five win, five goals, 10 assists, 15 total points, and he's averaging a point per game along with Jacob St. Andre and Isaac Gibbs. He is 2-1-1 all-time against, 2-1-3 all-time against FGCU in goals, assists, and points. And for Florida Gulf Coast, real quick, we'll look at Skylar Pettingale with 13 games played, 9 goals, 14 assists, 23 points. Currently on a 7-game point streak for the Eagles, and he scored 4 goals the other night in the comeback win over UNCW. And the other player to watch for the Eagles, number 5, Blake Hartman, the leading defenseman with 13 games played, has 4 goals, 8 assists for 12 total points. He leads all defensemen in scoring categories, Reagan, and he's the third oldest member on the team at just 23 years old. We'll turn it back to Reagan now for tonight's scratches. Yeah, so scratches tonight Luke Wild is, uh, is out per usual for Central Michigan along with Austin Ritter. Austin Whaley uh, suffered, a, su suffered an upper body injury uh, in practice this week, so he is out. Darsh Kashyap out again with that torn ACL. Jordan Cooper out with that suspension. And the two netminders out tonight for the Chippewas are Joel Drucker and Lauren Jones. As for tonight's keys to the game, uh, presented by CMishIceHockey.com, uh, they... Uh, the Chippewas need to score the first goal. Uh, they've given up the goal in the last three games. They gave up the opening tally in each of those games, and it's it it hurt them badly against Adrian. Though they uh, were able to survive uh, in the first game, they were unable to come back and get that win as they allowed Adrian to score the second goal in that last contest back on December 11th. They also need to turn on the gas and. Uh, bring up the effort just a little bit. They've been playing hard the last couple of days, but coming out of a break like this, it's important to get your feet moving early and uh, keep that same intensity going throughout. One thing to note about that, Reagan, is this team practices Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. They have not practiced for the last two days, and yesterday we saw in Florida they had that day to kind of rest and get used to the environment, as I talked about with, co with Captain Brennan Martin in the preview show, but... The one thing that they've got to do, as you mentioned, is put in that effort, like you said, Reagan, and, and, and notably not against necessarily better teams, but in a game like this where it's going to be close, you're on Florida Gulf Coast Ice, who have come off two weekend series where they've played really close with their opponents, Notre Dame and UNCW. It's going to be a big challenge for them to get going in the first period. Yeah, another thing for the Chippewas is uh, turn up the special teams a little bit. They've been red hot on the power play, or the penalty kill, pardon me, as of late. They haven't given up a goal in five games on the penalty kill, but they also need to get that power play working just a little bit more. They haven't scored a goal in a couple of games, and uh, it, it hurt them last game when they went 0 for 4 on, or over two on the man advantage. Now we turn to a new segment, Light the Lamp, where the, uh, where the uh, members of the media team, including uh, the two broadcasters and, uh, and Tristan Hagenstein, the photographer, and Joe uh, Grogan, both uh, all pick a player which we think will do the best. So tonight I went with Jacob St. Andre. He's been phenomenal against uh, Florida Gulf Coast this year. Uh, or not, not this year, but in the past, he uh, had a five-point game the last time the Chippewas were here at uh, Brian, we were here at Hat Hurts Arena. Devin, who do you go with? I'm taking tonight Brendan Martin, the captain. He's been very excellent as well against Florida Gulf Coast. Has two goals and assists and three total points against this team. And Brendan Martin is the one that's really been preaching that business first mentality. This is a business trip. I expect Brendan Martin to set the tone for the team as every captain should and come out tonight flying. He's got my light the lamp tonight. 
Okay, as for Joe Grogan, he went with Isaac Gibbs, the leading goal scorer this year for the Central Michigan Chippewas. Gibbs has nine goals and eight assists, giving him 17 on the year. And Tristan Hagenstein went with the, uh, with the rookie, the player who hasn't played a game in a Central Michigan uniform yet this year, Julian Johnson. We'll see how those picks roll out here tonight. That'll just about do it for our live portion of the pregame show. Stand by as Reagan Cleave sat down with Coach Tyler Cataline ahead of tonight's contest from the Everblades, the Everblades Arena in Hertz here, the Hertz Arena here, home of the Everblades. We'll be right back with you on this pregame edition of CMU D3 Hockey here live on CCHN. to today's edition of the Coaches Show from sunny Florida, where we are uh, sitting down here with Coach Tyler Cataline ahead of tonight's contest against the Florida Gulf Coast Eagles. Well, Tyler, your squad has given up the first goal in each of the last three games. What do you guys need to do to get that first goal here tonight? Oh, I didn't know that stat, thanks. Uh, no, we just had a team meeting, you know, right when we came to the rink, and, you know, I told, I mean, this is the start of, you know, second semester. Know, in my mind, we're, we've lost our last two games, you know, going back to Adrian and then just the alumni game that we just had. So, I mean, we got to come out flying. We had really, our, I think, our best week of practice all year. So, I mean, we're we're focused. We're ready to go. We've had a good, you know, day and a half of hanging out and bonding. So, yeah, hopefully we come out strong and uh, get the first one on. Yeah, hopefully you guys are able to break that streak here tonight. You guys have a, have a multitude of players out tonight, including Austin Whaley, who's out with an upper body injury, and Jordan Cooper with that suspension uh, from the fight at the end of that Adrian game. Uh, what With them out, who do you expect to step up here tonight and also this series? You know, saying it's Simon's line, you know, they're, they're big pieces for us. Um, defense, you know, we, we had to move Keelan back on D, so, which is okay. I mean, he's a big body. He's played defense in the past, so, you know, we're – you know, we're, we're going to see what we got. You know, I mean, we got, you know, some new guys coming in that are playing. You know, Julian's going to make his first, you know, start today. So, I mean, we're, we're definitely going to see what we have going uh, uh, towards the Nationals. Yeah, certainly. It should be fun to watch your group of guys here tonight. Moving over and taking a look at the other side of the ice here tonight. Florida Gulf Coast leading scorer Skylar Pettengill uh, has been on a tear lately, uh, collecting uh, points in seven straight hockey games, bringing his total to nine goals, 14, point, or 14 assists, and 23 points. His skills were evident last game when he scored four goals in regulation and added a shootout goal in that game. Uh, how do you plan on stopping a uh, goal scorer of that caliber this weekend? You know, we got to play physical. You know, I, we said that in the locker room. I mean, the first game that we played against them, I, honestly, I think they outplayed us big time. Ropey stood on his head against them. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to come out and play physical. They're a fast team. You know, not just him, but, I mean, their whole their whole squad is, is fast. So, you know, we're going to play more physical today and hopefully, you know, play faster than them. Yeah, hopefully, good luck tonight, Coach. That'll do it for our, our for our coaches show here this afternoon. We will step aside, but we'll be right back with the start of the hockey game here from Hertz Arena. It's the Chippewas and the Eagles coming up next. This is mine. Look, this is mine. I, I wrote on it. This is mine. Yeah. Here's this. We're good. Uh, the coaches show is done.
Thanks, Reagan, for that portion of the coach's show. And as he mentioned, you know, a big one is this team's ability to score in the first period. We will see if they can get that done. But one thing that we want to look forward to is the current Division Three rankings in the ACHA. And we'll also get to the upcoming schedule for the Chippewas. Looking now at the D Division Three ACHA standings as of December s December 12th. First place, Hope College tonight comes in as the number one team. They've been number one the entire season so far in the rankings. And a big game tonight, they're going to play Grand Valley State, who is the number three team in the nation. And that's the Hockey House podcast game of the week to watch for Division Three. We will wait to score that and let you know later on in the post game if we get to it. At number two is the Arkansas Razorbacks. Coming into this game, they were ranked at number four in the previous second rankings of the uh, Division Three standings, but Arkansas, one of the better teams in the South, along with Florida Gulf Coast, is making a name for themselves, and we'll wait to see them in the national championship. Look for them to make fire, as last year they made the semifinal in the shortened COVID season and the Nationals and they played the Chippewas and blew them out in their round robin game so look for the Arkansas Razorbacks this season. At number three is the Grand Valley State Lakers. Grand Valley came into tonight ranked at number three through the season and they look to as I mentioned earlier beat the Hope College Dutchman who are currently undefeated. One of Grand Valley's only losses this season came at the hands of these Florida Gulf Coast Eagles in the first game of the season 5-2 to two at home. Grand Valley and Hope Playing at one and three. At number four is New Mexico. Uh, coming in, they were ranked at the number five spot and move up one to four. New Mexico undefeated so far in conference play, and they actually sit on a 20-game winning streak right now. Coming into tonight, one of the best teams, actually the best team out west of the Mississippi. Look for them to be damaging the national championship. As for number five, it's Miami, Ohio. Coming in, jumping up from the number eight spot. At six, your Central Michigan Chippewas falling down from the number three ranking after the loss to the Adrian Bulldogs on December 11th. As for number seven, it's Notre Dame. Notre Dame split the weekend series two weeks ago against Florida Gulf Coast, but they beat them nine to four in the second game. Notre Dame trying to establish their presence for a national championship. At number eight, these Florida Gulf Coast Eagles came into the week, the, the standings, as I should say, as the number 13 team, moved up all the way to the third spot and now fall to the number eight spot. So Florida Gulf Coast, Rounding out the top eight. At number nine, it is Air Force. Jumping up for the number 13 spot. And rounding out the top 10, the top of the MCHC East, the Lawrence Tech Blue Devils. Moving up for the 14 spot. At number 11, Iowa State. Number 12, Nebraska. Number 13, Trine, who the Chippewas will take on after this weekend series against Florida Gulf Coast. Washington, St. Louis, 14. The Michigan Wolverines of Ann Arbor at 15. Missouri State at 16 to round out the top 16 teams in ACHA Division Three. With that, we'll look now at the Central Michigan Chippewa schedule coming up for the season as tomorrow night they will take on Florida Gulf Coast once again to round out the weekend series here in Estero, Florida. After that, they will head about 100 miles south towards Tri University in Angola, Indiana. That game will be a weekend series as well. Puck drop for those slated for 4, 4 p.m. Eastern time in both rinks. Moving on to the next week, it'll be Central Michigan and the Oakland University Grizzlies taking on each other in a weekend series. Lawrence Tech and Central Michigan after that on February 11th. That'll be a big weekend series. And to round out the season so far, pending a schedule change, will be University of Michigan Ann Arbor and the Central Michigan Chippewas. And we're just getting set for puck drops so far here from Estero, Florida. You're listening live with us on CCHM. Stay with us. Puck drop and national anthems are next.
Starting goaltenders tonight for the Central Michigan Chippewas. They send out Thomas Rofe, who has a record of 10, uh, has, through 10 games, has a 7-2-2 two, two record, a 1-8-1 goals against average, and a 9-43 save percentage. As for Florida Gulf Coast, it's the same goaltender they had in the month of October, Nicholas Stiles, who through 11 games at eight and three record, two, uh, 324 goals against average, and a 9 Oh, nine save percentage. We'll hand it over to Devin for the starting lineups. Starting lineups tonight presented by CMHIceHockey.com out there for the Chippewas will be number 13, Jacob Kosnick out there with Isaac Gibbs and Jay Dinu. On defense, it'll be Brendan Martin, Kyle Chapman, and starting in goal for Thomas Rowe. For the Eagles out there, it'll be number 25, Robert Nussbaum, along with Skylar Pettingill, as well as the defensive pairing, Samuel Haley and Brady Walsh, as well as Matthew Briggs out there Starting out for the Eagles. And as Reagan mentioned, starting netminder, Nicholas Stiles. As we're set for puck drop here for the first of two games in a weekend series here tonight. From right to left, it'll be the Chippewas in their maroon gold and maroon or golden hats. On the left, it'll be the Florida Gulf Coast Eagles in their white, light blue, and emerald green sweaters. As we are underway, puck drop here from Estero, the Hertz Arena, home of the Everblades. And it starts out the Chippewas. It'll be Brendan Martin sending this one deep into the puck that's deflected up and out of play far in the Florida Gulf Coast zone. Things are starting to get chippy even as the puck drops at center ice. Isaac Gibbs was getting into it with Robert Nussbaum on the near side of the circle. And... Uh, that nothing came of it, but they were giving each other a couple of hacks and a couple of slashes, and right now that puck out of play will result in a draw in the Florida Gulf Coast end. Faceoff will come to this side of Florida Gulf Coast end. They win the draw out there. That's number 12 out there for them. Winning the draw is Matthew Briggs, and he'll leave it back. But a team over here by the Chippewas. Isaac Gibbs takes it behind the net. Leaves it there for Nadeau. Trying to throw one in front with nobody home, and here come the Eagles on the breakout. Over the wing, it's number 16. Skyler Pettigrew, the link scorer for the Eagles. Trying to get in. Gets knocked off the puck hard by Jay Nadeau, who falls to the ice, and that'll cause a stoppage of play, rather. That was over there, number five, Andrew Porzada getting into play. Yeah, Pettengill showing off his skill right there at the neutral zone, dipsy doodling around the defense at the offensive blue line for the Eagles, and uh, he, he and Jay Nadu went tumbling into the left circle, and uh, Buck slid right in on Rofe. Skyler Pettengill leads the team in all major scoring categories with nine goals, 14 assists, and 23 total points, but 50 penalty minutes as a clearing attempt in front by Keelan Baker sends this after a nice pressure by the Eagles, and they'll have to reset. Taking it over there is Robert Nussbaum. Yeah, that was a great save by Thomas Rofe, kicking out the right pad, now look out. Here come the Eagles into the Chippewa zone. Behind the net, Keelan Baker has to shove off a few players. Buck gets tied up at the half wall boards, and this one's won by the Chippewas in the battle. Simon Selly gets it out the wing. Try to stretch pass over there for Jacob Kosnick, who just missed on that one, and has to send it deep into the zone. Leaves it there for Simon Selly at the half wall. Tied up there with a forward, that's Skylar Pettingill at the half wall. He won the battle and got it out to center, and it was immediately stolen by Jacob St. Andre. Tried to get sent out of the zone, and it was deflected by his own player, and it came back towards the Chippewa zone and they take over. Yeah, great job there by St. Andre at the offensive blue line to work over his man and get control of that puck. And as he chases that one into the right circle. 18.30 left to go in this first period. You're listening live to Central Michigan Hockey from Estero, Florida, home of the Florida Gulf Coast Eagles. And this is the first game of the two-game weekend series between the number six and number eight teams in the nation. Myself, Devin Sarah on the call with Reagan Cleaves. Let the Chippewas take over at center. Charlie Hayes turned the puck over, and that one's sent deep into the zone where Stiles will leave it there for his defenseman over there. That's number 21 out there, Shea Matruska, who will play both ways tonight for the Eagles at forward and defense, shifting the lines. Shea Matruska, the freshman from Naples, Florida, last played for Florida Junior Everblades, or rather his fourth season, excuse me, the seniors. Here come over the wing, the Eagles, the refs, they're going quick shot of that one, just over the shoulder pad of the goaltender, Rove. That was taken by Jacob Toy, the captain of the Eagles. And now the Chippewas take over their end. Brendan Martin up the wing there for Keelan Baker, rather Keegan Moore. And now over the line comes Justin McComas, turned aside one defender and went towards the left circle. Lost the puck on his stick, however, and it was dumped to the other side. Chippewas keep it in. Hayden Flynn at the point, sends this one deep to the other side. It's getting in there as McComas has a big hits already. Checked there on Shea Matruska at the half wall. It's a quick 
puck turn in front of the net by McComas. Easily gloved down by the goaltender Stiles for the first stoppage of play. And McComas motioning a, a pushing motion, possibly a cross check there. Yeah, he wanted a cross check on that. Um, he let that shot go from just inside the left point. Uh, Stiles shot, saw it all the way, but he bobbled it in the glove hand before he was able to hold on to it. And that will result in a draw to his right. Taking the face off will be the freshman Aiden Gazdecki from Riverview High School. Teammate, former teammate with new acquisition to the team, Julian Johnson from Riverview High School. Julian Johnson, our player to watch in the pregame as this puck skates all the way down to row for a stop with 17 minutes left. The transfer student from the Adrian Bulldogs played for the Division II team for nine games, posted for them two assists in a national tournament appearance game, and transfers over here as a sophomore to help out the firepower for the Chippewas. He'll play on the fourth line as an extra skater. As the face-off came in the Chippewa zone, and it was won by the Eagles. Back to the point for Matrusco. Takes a shot in that one easily. Blocked down by the pad of Roof. It got to him with two shots already in the period for the Eagles. 16.45 to go in the first. That one was through traffic. I think uh, Ben Reichek screened his man as he was trying to block the shot about 10 feet from where it came from. Now Charlie Hayes pressured there by the Eagle. That was Christian McGovern, and it's turned over in their own end. Here come the Eagles the other way. Quick shot by in the point there by McGovern, and that one turned aside by Rofe, and it comes all the way back towards center ice where the Eagles take back again. Here they try to come over the blue line once again. Skidding in there quickly is number 24 for the Eagles. Back down to the side for Petrusco. Takes a shot near side, and a nice glove save there by Rofe. That feed came there from Jared Searles over to Petrusco. That was a fantastic glove save by Thomas Rofe. Looked like he was a little behind that play. He was able to snag that reach behind him just a little bit to snag that puck out of the air on the far side. That shot came from a sharp angle, bottom of the left circle. And now taking over here is the Chippewas. Matthew Briggs took that shot, and this one turned over in the Chippewas zone. The Eagles trying to start out on the forecheck. At the half wall, Jared Seals on the far side. Leaves it there deep for Briggs. Briggs now sends on to the slot, and that one a nice defensive stand with the stick of Jay Nadeau. Keeps this one away from the Eagles on a scoring chance, but it's still inside the Chippewa zone. Couple of players tie up at the half wall. Getting in there is Alex Lasky shoving over a player. Puck still not free at the far side. Half wall in the Chippewa zone, and it finally comes free. Here come the Eagles. A quick shot with the high slot, and the save there once again on Jared Seals, and a big hit laid there by Isaac, Isaac Gibbs on Seals at the top of the left circle. lit up. Seals at the top of the left circle after he let that puck go. I am extremely surprised that that wasn't called interference as Seals left his feet with the impact there from Isaac Gibbs. This game is physical through just the first five minutes and you can expect it to get even more so as we go on. Taking the face off, quick shot by the Eagles. That one deflected away. That was number five, Blake Hartman taking it, the leading defenseman for the Eagles. Through 13 games a season, four goals, eight assists, 12 total points, leads all defensemen in scoring categories. And as I mentioned in the pregame show, the third oldest member on this team, but one of the defensemen they're gonna look to get some scoring from as this faceoff will come all the way back towards the Chippewa zone after an icing. It'll be Joey Simon Selly there taking it off against number 13. That's Tyler Davidson. Joey Simon Selly, the senior from Bensville, Illinois, has won 67% of his faceoff draws taken this season. And one of the three of the former buzz and three line of Isaac Gibbs, Jacob Joey, Simon Selly, and Jacob St. Andres. The Eagles take a quick backhander shot. Near side, another try, and Rofe says no with the glove pad. Taking the shot over there was number 15. That was Brady Walsh with the chance. The Eagles still pressuring hard here. 15.08 to go in the first period. Turned over aside, a quick shot from the near side there by number 13. That was Dale, Tyler Davidson. Left it at the half wall from McCormick, and he sent it back deep to the zone where Kyle Chapman took over. Chapman turned it over, however, after he was pressured inside the zone by Davidson. Davidson there trying to skate after it. And Chippewa still can't get it out of the zone. Chapman tries to flip this out of the zone. He does. And a near breakout chance there for Jacob St. Andre as this puck just went over the glove of the goaltend or the defender, Robert Nussbaum. And now the Eagles start out. They send this one deep into the zone. Jacob Toy missed on a long stretch pass there. Keelan Baker went over there to skate after it. One of the two captains on this Chippewa team. Left it there for Jacob St. Andre. No tie up at the half wall. 
Yeah, Chippewas doing a good job defensively as here they break out. Here's Campbell. Here comes Owen Campbell over the Eagles' blue line. Skates to the left circle, gets the puck turned over there by a pair of Eagles. And this one's flipped up and out of the zone accidentally by the defender. That was Jacob Toy. Toy, the captain, senior from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, is one of the two oldest members on this team and needs two assists in this game to match his career-high assist total of 12 at Armstrong High. Yeah, that play uh, that went out of that went out of play along the near side is basically a result of the way this arena was built. The glass is about only three feet high. Here's a penalty coming up on the Chippewas penalty. as Kosnick took his man down in the neutral zone. But as we were, as I was just saying, the glass is shorter uh, here along the half wall, along the sideboards, and it jumps up by about five, by about two feet. Uh, from the hash marks down, so there's you can't really play the high glass a lot. So near with 14-10 left, Kosnick is whistled off for a trip. Shea Matruska taking the tripping penalty there, assessed the Jacob Kosnick with a 14-08. The Eagles will go to their first power play. Now the Eagles will start out. We stay five on five, however, so far as there was time left on the board. Oh, it was number 10, excuse me, Keelan Baker left there. Five on four penalty coming up here. We thought it was Jacob Kosnick. It looked like he was involved in the play at center ice with Shea Matruska, but nonetheless, the Eagles will start on this power play. Winning the draw there was Matthew Briggs for the Eagles, and he left it to the point there for his forward Matruska. Matruska left it at the blue line for James Rowe. Takes a shot, rebounded in front, and not a second chance after it made there. They still control over. Back to the point, Rowe. Looking, screening, tries to get a fan one there in the slot there for Penningill, and he just missed it on his stick. They still control in the zone. Another shot attempt, and that one it was blocked in front by the goaltender, or forward Lasky, excuse me. Now the defense, chip one. Nice defense here, screening in front of the goaltender. Here they come, Matruska at the blue line. Left it there to the rear slot, to the slot there for Penningill, and he couldn't get the shot off. That one defended well by Charlie Hayes. Tries to flip it out of the zone, and once again comes to Petruska. Chippewa still can't get out of the zone. Puck trickles towards the high slot. Taking the shot for the right side, goal! Near side off the goal post. That was Tyler Davidson. And this one still inside the Chippewa zone. One minute gone to the Eagles' first power play of the night. Another shot attempt there by Davidson at the left circle, and that one was saved by the left blocker of the goaltender, Rofe. Petruska left it at the blue line, and the Eagles will change here. Pettingill coming in there. And the left circle, defended well, screened off by Kosnick. Waved off, Evan McNamara comes in now, takes a shot, they score! It was rebounded in front a few times after a strong power play from the Eagles. It's Tyler Davidson getting the second chance, rebound in front, and it's 1-0 Eagles. Yeah, a dominant power play there for the Eagles. They were moving the puck with absolute ease the pa their passes were going through. The Chippewas seemed to be scrambling in their own end. They could not get the puck out. A couple of good keeps by the Florida Gulf Coast Eagles. And just to show you how dominant the Eagles have been through this first 749, Nick Stiles is warming up in his crease still. Chippewas only have three shots on goal through the first seven minutes and change. Tyler Davidson's eighth goal on the season puts him at 14 points. He now sits solely second on the team in goals this year, just behind Skylar Penningill's nine. He's averaging a point per game along with two other players for the Eagles. And he gets them up 1-0 going here. The first power play given up there by the Chippewas. And a shot attempt there by Isaac Gibbs as he went inside the Eagles zone but fell down. Here they come the other way. A quick shot from the point there taken by number six. That was Evan McNamara and the puck will trickle around a few times in the slot and it came free to the near side half wall. Gibbs there took the puck over from G.R. Amita of the Eagles and he'll skid it out of the zone. Intended a far side pass there for number five, Andrew Porzondic and Porzondic couldn't handle it and heads back off the ice. Comes all the way to the Eagles zone. Jay Nadeau pursues a couple of players. Brady Walsh tagging up there with his defender out there. That's Jared Searles and a big hit late at the near side half wall by Nadu colliding with the captain Jacob Toy and we're going to cause a stoppage of play here. Yeah, puck goes up and out of play but one of the things we talked about Devin in the pregame show was that the Chippewas needed a fast start that's been anything but that. They let up the first goal in the hockey game for the fourth straight game in a row. They need to respond and the shots on goal are 16-3. to Central Michigan is being outshot by more than 
four times, and there's one that goes wide. That won't count as a shot on goal. But Keelan Baker redirected a shot from Aiden Gazdecki. Excuse me, Reagan. They're you were good. mentioning the slow start as right now the Eagles in favor of 13 shots. And another one taken there in the high slot by Michael Rowe, saved with the glove of Rowe. He's been busy so far the first yeah, nine he, minutes. He has been busy and incredibly so. That was his 17th shot on goal and 16th save of the hockey game. He's made a couple of nice saves, and that shot that came from the left point by Davidson, Rove, it, it sounded like Rove had made the save, but it was it squeaked through him at the last moment, and that power play goal is the first one that the Chippewas have given up in five games. Their last power play goal they gave up was against Calvin at home, the lone goal in that hockey game for the Knights. Chippewas have to reset in their own zone. Christopher Martin sends it out of the way, up the way to Ben Reitschuk in the near side half wall and lost it on his stick. Sloppy passing again from the Chippewas. Can't seem to get any sort of offense going as Reitschuk's absolutely laid out at center ice by number 19, Bradley Gordon. No call on the ice there for any sort of roughing and just another lit hit they, they're laid on the new player, Jillian Johnson. The Eagles are absolutely bullying the Chippewas right now, Reagan, with 10.50 yeah. left to go in the first. It's been an incredibly physical game, and unfortunately the Chippewas, outside of that Gibbs hit a couple minutes in, they haven't had much, they haven't gotten a ton of hits on. Rychuk deflected a pass attempt there from Blake Hartman and sent all the way back down to the Eagles zone. Now Rychuk pursuing on there with Jari Simoncelli. Gets him some free ice, trying to set one to the slot there, intended for Owen Campbell, and it was taken away there by number 25, Robert Nussbaum. Nussbaum got it up the wing to an Eagle, and then the shot attempt there in the point from Samuel Haley with eight... 10-21 left to go. We'll get a stoppage of play as the penalty's coming up here, Reagan. Yeah, penalty's going to come to Alex Lasky. He's going to go off two minutes for a hold. He held uh, as, as uh, Matthew Briggs as he was entering the zone to the Chippewas on the power play for, on the penalty kill for the second time tonight coming into today. Right, and with that last one, they are 49 for 59 on the penalty kill. You know, Reagan, I just mentioned that there's been a lot of physicality so far from both sides, but namely Fort Gulf Coast right now up 1-0 going to the power play. They declared themselves on Instagram just a month ago the bullies of the South, and they have absolutely established that so far in this game, already leading in the hits category and the shots on goals. Another one was taken there but deflected away all the way back down to Styles. That was a great save by Thomas Rofe right off the faceoff. It was through a screen, and it was a quick shot in from the right circle. He was able to stick out that waffle board and knock that puck away. Eagles come back once again. Skylar Pettigill, the leading scorer for the Eagles, sets up in the zone. Lost, losing a stick was Owen Campbell defending and it comes back to the point. A couple of quick passes here for the Eagles. Looking to get another power play goal here. Go two for two. It's a quick shot on that on rope and there's no second chance there. He'll glove that one down. Yeah, fans, don't forget that the CMU Club Hockey Network YouTube channel is your one-stop shop for highlights, exclusive interviews, and full-game broadcast for CMU D3 Hockey. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so as never to miss a moment of Chippewa Hockey. Just go to the YouTube and search CMU Club Hockey Network to find the channel. Face-off draw won by the Eagles again out there. Joey Simoncelli loses another draw. Not off to a great start, as is any of the players. And a long stretch past their own Campbell trying to do a solo attempt. Stolen away there by the assistant captain, Blake Hartman. He'll skate over the blue line into the Chippewa zone now. At the near side corner now, they fight for it. Kyle Chapman, or rather the captain, Brennan Martin, sent this to the other side where it was Owen Campbell just chipping it out of the zone to reset and get fresh bodies on the ice. Up the near side wing there, intended there for Matthew Briggs. He'll leave it there over there for Nussbaum. Nussbaum was the leading scorer for the Eagles last season. Sends it to the slot, a quick shot off the block of Rofe, and he has that one under his pads. That was taken there by Matthew Briggs, and what great passing from the Eagles so far, yeah. Reagan, and not even great defending as he looked like he had a wide open shot from the slot. Yeah, and it seems, although the Chippewas are on a penalty kill, they've just been playing like they're coming out of a month and nine day break, which they have, but it just seems like Florida Gulf Coast is so much faster. They're so much more in shape. Not That's not to say that Chippewas aren't, but it's just they haven't had a month break before this game, and Chippewas have just come out slow. The Eagles had to reset at center ice, and it's Tyler Davidson with another shot. That one deflected away wide by Chapman, and it's still loose behind the net. Chapman now fights off a few defenders, and Davidson, it comes to the front of the net where Rofe has to settle this one in his hand with 8.46 left, 25 seconds in the power play. The Eagles have 22 shots to center Michigan's four right now, absolutely dominating the way so far. Yeah, the Chippewas, uh, Thomas Rofe doing a nice job on that previous play. The puck 
was behind the net to his left, and it came out right in front. He was able to corral it with the gold paddle and bring it into his glove. If he hadn't, Michael Giarmata's right on the doorstep. He has an easy tap in past Thomas Rofe if Rofe doesn't corral that one. A nice clear by the Chippewas to finally relieve the pressure and get fresh bodies out there. The personnel for the Eagles coming back here is number 21 over the line, Shane Petruska. And now Petruska over the blue line. Leaves it there for Evan McNamara, who took a shot, and that one went wide. Came to the right circle there for Giaramita, and he went to the other side there. Over the way, getting over there, a big hit laid there by Jacob Kosnick. And the Chippewas desperately trying to defend the fast skating Eagles, getting inside deep in the zone. They still control. Over the wing there in the corner, Giaramita, pursued by Jay Nadeau. It's stuck at the half wall, and the Chippewas won the scrum and got it out to center. Isaac Gibbs finally clears his puck out, and the Eagles have to chip it back into the two their zone with James Rowe left it and gets fresh bodies out there. The Eagles power play ends. They go one for two on the night. Rove making a couple of nice saves there to keep this game only at one deficit so far. But Chippewas need to get some offense going. And his own end skating there is number 28 for the Chippewas. Christopher Martin sends us out of the zone. Up the way to Isaac Gibbs who couldn't handle it. And Jay Nadeau was able to leave it there. Tried to send one to center ice. Not really looking for a pass. And it's turned over there by Anthony Solzio. Solzio over the line. To the left circle, takes a shot by the glove, and Rolf made the save but couldn't handle it, and it's still free at the half wall. At the far side, Charlie Hayes left it there for Isaac Gibbs. Gibbs makes one nice move, has a one-on-one -on -one at the right circle, takes a shot, and Styles says no with the glove save. Yeah, for Styles, he hasn't had to face much early in this hockey game, but that's the sixth save he's had to make, and that was a good one. Gibbs, Gibbs made a move at the line to... Uh, lose his man, and then he had the top right corner labeled on that shot, but Styles flashed the leather on the left hand and made a good save on Central Michigan's leading scorer. Golf whack attempt there from Jacob St. Andre after the faceoff win, not able to handle it. Jacob Toy in there to twig the stick out there and get it controlled in his own end. Leaves it there over the way and dropping the trailer was Russ Bomb, but turned over in their own end. Owen Campbell skates in there with Simon Selly. Simon Selly tries to go in front. We have no chance and it just went wide of the crease on the near side and the left circle. And this one still inside the Eagles zone. The Chippewas trying to control here, get some offense going. Long pass back to the point intended for Alex Lasky, missed by Campbell, and it came all the way back to Rowe. Finally, some shots on goal on the netminder, Styles to make it tough for him, but it leaves them still without a score in this game as a icing all the way down by Alex Lasky will take it back to the Chippewa zone. And man, you want to talk about a team that can shoot the puck, Reagan. In nine of the last 13 games, both teams have outshot their opponents, but Florida Gulf Coast in five of the nine times they've outshot opponents have done it by 50 or more goals. Right now, Reagan, I think they're on pace for 75-80 so far, absolutely taking it to the netminder row. This is absolutely ridiculous. 24 shots on goal up on the board to our right, and typically when you see that high of a shot count, you think... Uh, you think you, the Puck shot taker... Inside. Sorry, Reagan. It's a quick shot from the point there by Hartman was with Logan Beckwith. And, and that's a tripping call. Almost caught up here. We're going to have a penalty coming up here on the Eagles. That's Christian McGovern going to the box, Reagan. Yeah, McGovern's head of the box for a trip here. Chippewas will head on the power play for the first time tonight. They are 12 for 59, 20.34% on this season. Let's see if they can get more than seven shots on goal here. As you were mentioning about the shot totals, Reagan, it really seems like in these kinds of games, you know, I've seen it in the NHL level with the LA Kings and Detroit Red Wings game just a few weeks ago, that when a team's being outshot badly like this, it's really just a case of gaining the momentum early. As another shot attempt there by Jay Nadeau. Reagan, what do you think the Chippewas are doing that's causing all of this or the lack thereof? I think it's really just the fact that they haven't played in a month and nine, and nine days, whereas uh, the Eagles have played a really good team as that shot goes up and out of play. The, Chip, the, the Eagles have played some really good teams since they've come back. I mean, they played uh, Notre Dame, who's currently ranked number seven in the nation, and uh, right smack in, in dab in between these two teams. And... Uh, They've had, they've got more fresh legs than the Chippewas. A, they're coming off a break, and they're also coming off of a flight yesterday. Well, looks like the Chippewas. Quick shot from the right circle by, that was number 28 over there, Kristen Martin. Just went wide of the net. The Chippewas start out in the zone. And pass there in the slot intended for Jay Nadeau. Just missed on it off the feed from Andrew Porzani, and it comes back out to center. So the Eagles go to their first penalty kill of the night. The Eagles rank 10th in the nation in penalty kill at 88.5% on the season, and the Chippewas need to get back with 
even right now and need it. 125 left to go now. 542 left to go. You're listening live from Estero, Florida in the Hertz Arena, home of the Florida Everblades between the Florida Gulf Coast Eagles and the Central Michigan Chippewas. As the e Chippewas trying to get even here and even this one. They're up 1-0 in the series as here come the Eagles the other way. A turnover there by Petruska. Got it back to the point there. He'll skate wide with it. Leaves it there for his forward McGovern. Goes to the slot. Quick and that one off the near side post and went trickled out near to the corner. And this one is controlled in his own zone by Simon Selly. Left it there over the way for Christopher Martin and they're pursued by the defender, Samuel Haley. They finally get over the zone. Here comes Jacob St. Andre, the second leading scorer for the Chippewas, averaging just over a point per game. Charlie Hayes at the point. Takes a quick shot and that one easily saved by Styles. He saw it the whole way from the point. 41 to go with this power play, five minutes in the first. Yeah, this is just, th this power play is a good example of how dominant this hockey game has been. There are four guys on the ice for, for the Eagles, five for the Chippewas, and the Eagles have been consistently just harassing the Chippewas, not being able, not letting them set up anything in the offensive zone. Here's Brennan Martin. Shot attempt there, deflected in front by Simon Selly and that one. Why is it on the shoulder of Styles after, oh my goodness, was that a Michigan attempt from yeah. Simon Selly? <laughs> wow, they almost pulled it off. Simon Selly behind the net, trying to get it on the plate of his stick. And the Chippewa still on the power play here. Inside the zone is Owen Campbell losing his footing and it comes back out to center after the clear. Styles read that all the way as a goaltender. He didn't go down as most goalies do when there's a puck behind the net. He stayed up and was able to make the save on the shoulder, on the right shoulder as Simon Zelli tried the lacrosse goal as the Chippewas have fallen for over one of the power play. They only got three shots on that power play. But three shots better than they have most of the game, Reagan, and with four minutes left in this first period, they're trying to get something going. Jacobson, Andre to the point, shot, rebound in the slot, and that one was deflected with the pad of style. It was a great save, and here come the Eagles quickly over the line. On the 2 on one a quick shot in the right circle, just went wide. That was Tyler Pettingill, the leading scorer for the Eagles, taking it. And that one's now sent back out to center. What a chance, both ways on the ice, going all the way through, end to end. And a great clear now by the Chippewas, and they'll get it to the Florida Gulf Coast zone. Justin McComas skates over the line. Leaves it there after it was sent wide up and out towards center. Eagles reset. Leaving it there was McCormick. Rather goes up the wing there for Davidson. Davidson had the goal earlier tonight in the first period. Left it there at the point. Blocked in front there by a player, and it comes back to the blue line once again. Keeping inside the zone is Blake Hartman, the leading defender for the Eagles. Comes back to get after a few deflections. Back to the point. Over the way to Nussbaum. Nussbaum trying to get one down low. Blocked in front by his own player. That was Jaramini, the other assistant captain. Leaves it for the another assistant captain to the slot. And threw a one-timer almost by Jaramina. Just missed it on the blade of his stick. Great pressure once again by the Eagles on five on five. Here comes Jacob Kosnick over the blue line on the turnover. A two-on-one there. Has it with the Cubs. The McCombs back in there. And that one saved by Styles. He says no with the glove of the chest. Yeah, that's that's a great opportunity for the Chippewas. Unfortunately, the pass across to McComas there by, uh, by Jacob Kosnick was a bit behind him. And McComas had to reach behind him. And he couldn't fully corral the puck. And... Didn't get a great shot off as both of those players go to the bench. Frustrated here is it's been a frustrating first 17 minutes here for Central Michigan as uh, Catiline is talking to his players across the bench, trying to motivate them to get something here. Second faceoff won by the Chippewas again as Kyle Chapman trying to take a clapper. That one blocked up and out by Michael Rowe into the Eagles bench. 2.42 to go in this first period of play live from Estero, Florida. Reagan, you've got something to mention here. Yeah, the Chippewas, since that power play, have seemed to tighten down a little bit more on the defensive end. They haven't allowed a shot on goal since the start of that power play, and they they themselves have seven. So they're getting a lot more shots on goal as that shot goes in on Styles. He makes the save, so tides seem to be turning at least a little bit more in the Chippewas' favor here. Fresh bodies will come off the ice for the Chippewas. It'll be Brendan Martin along there with Kyle Chapman sending it off, and it'll be Alex Lasky and Charlie Hayes to replace them on defense. Taking the faceoff draw will be Aiden Gazdecki, and he win it, his second straight now so far. Left it there for Hayden Flynn, back down low. It's in the Florida Gulf Coast zone at the half wall, and it trickled free all the way there to Michael Rowe, who handles it. Goes end to end in his own trapezoid and leaves it there. Turn it over there after night defensive play by Hayden Flynn, and keeps the pressure on. Now Rychuk. 
tries to dish it over to Flynn, but is knocked down to the ice by a trio of Eagles and is kept inside the zone. Nice play there by Gazdecki to deflect it down, but the Eagles have to reset. As no teams will change yet. The Eagles into the Chippewa zone now. Jacob Toya, the captain there, tried to drop the trailer to Anthony Asolzio and it was turned over by Gazdecki who will come off the ice. Now Toy there, trying to deflection pass there for, intended there for Rowe, and that one just went down on as he felt and blew a tire. Now Toy gets it back after it's turned over. Still there, quick shot from the right circle, blocked in front by Rychuk, and he pushes him aside. The Eagles now inside the zone, to the high slot. Back to the point there, it's Searles, Jared Searles, the defenseman from Stratford, Ontario, Canada. Has only played for Canadian teams and had played in 116 games for the Seaforth Generals of the CPJHL. So, 117 to go in the first period. The Eagles lead 1-0, leading in shots and the skull right now, 24-14 in favor of shots. But the Chippewas, as Reagan mentioned, have really been taking it to them. But one minute left, they're going to try and make another pressure here as it's turned over in their own zone there. Chippewas tried on the breakout and losing it on a stick was the new guy, Julian Johnson. And it comes back all the way to Charlie Hayes in his own zone after the dump by Marcos Pankey, the freshman from St. Louis, Missouri. Now here come the Eagles again. Skating around, trying to go wrap around there was Blake Hartman, and that one was easily stopped by the goaltender Rove. And now in still side the Chippewa zone, dumping it deep is Nussbaum. Nussbaum intercepted there by Baker at the near side corner. Now pursued over after there by Matthew Briggs. Briggs tried to leave it there for Panky, and he messed it up. And Owen Campbell now flips this one out of the zone, and a big hit's late at center there, met up with Simon Selly and Robert Nussbaum. Nussbaum turned the puck over to Simon Selly, and now Simon Selly, a good breakout. Here he comes over the line, trying to dish it there into this high slot for Owen Campbell, and it was turned over there, nice job there by Skylar Penningill, and it comes all the way back down to the Chippewa zone, floating for an icing. Yeah, it was a good good opportunity there by Joey Simon Selly, banking it off the boards and getting into the offensive end, but. Uh, as he tried to pass across, nobody was with him. Chippewas haven't been able to get a lot of offensive pressure on Nick Styles, despite the 14 shots on goal, which is a respectable total in the first period. They just, they're just being outshot by 10. Five seconds to go in the period. Reagan trying to get a shot off was there. St. Andre, but was deflected away. And with two seconds left in the period, the Eagles will head to the second period, leading in this game 1-0. Shots in favor of them, 24-14. What a first 10 minutes by the Florida Gulf Coast Eagles, scoring on the power play, and they'll go one for two so far in this game. The Chippewas had a power play chance just after that with eight minutes left, but failed to capitalize on it as they'll head deflated off the dice after another slow start. This is now the fourth straight game, Reagan, that they have started down a goal in the first period. And if you're coach, Tyler Catalan, you've got to like the effort in the last 10 minutes, but certainly not the first 10. Yeah, certainly not the first 10. It hasn't been very good. Er, it wasn't a very good start by Central Michigan at all, and we'll touch on that in our first intermission show coming up right after this. We'll step aside. First intermission report on the other side. one nothing. Eagles lead after 20.
Reagan Cleaves back here, radio inside at Kurtz Arena in Estero, Florida. We're after 20 minutes of play. The Chippewas miraculously only trail it by one period of play. They're being outshot officially 24 to 14, but uh, according to Joel Drucker, he thinks the uh, the scorekeeper might be a little trigger happy for the Chippewas as he's got it at a 25-11 total, but officially it is 24-14. Chippewas just in that first period could get absolutely nothing going. Offensively, uh, they, ha they had 14 shots, but seven of those came after the 13:39 mark, they started out with seven minutes through the first almost 14, or seven shots on goal through almost the first 14 minutes of play. Uh, so th they upped it a little bit here, but the Chippewas often start games slow like this and they really can't afford to do that. Yes, they're a second half team, but that doesn't mean you can totally abandon the game in the first period, let's hope. They can get it back here as we go on. They've also been playing a little bit sloppy in their own end. They've been leaving they've been leaving players wide open in the slot, and the Eagles have been able to get a ton of good quality chances on Thomas Rofe, but he's been able to stand tall and make 23 saves. Pardon me, 23 saves through the first 20 minutes, and let's hope for the Chippewas they can get their legs moving as we go on into the latter 40. Power plays, <coughs> pardon me, in that first period. Uh, Florida Gulf Coast going over, or going one for two as they score to the Baker power play. On the Baker penalty for a trip at 7.09. Davidson letting a shot go the rope from the left point that Rofe made, made, uh, made most of the initial save, but it trickled through him and crossed just over the line. That's 7.09 for the power play goal. The first power play goal the Chippewas have given up in nine or in five games. And then uh, for the Chippewas, they are uh, 0 for 1 on the power play. They did get a lot better in the shot total as they went on in that first period, getting seven in the last seven minutes of play here at Hertz Arena. Well, moving on, we'll take a look at our out-of-town scoreboard as we uh, move on in this uh, in this first intermission report. The Division II Hockey Club cent uh, for Central Michigan is taking on Northern Michigan at Ice Arena. They start a late one here tonight, 10 p.m. This start time from Ice Arena again. Central Michigan hosting Northern Michigan University. As for the women's Division two, uh, they are playing uh, the visitor to Bowling Green State University, not this week, but next Saturday, January 29th. They've had a plethora of games canceled uh, in the early part of January. They were supposed to play California University of Pennsylvania twice on the 22nd and 23rd, but those got canceled, and they also had their 28th contest against the Lake Superior State Lakers canceled. So their next game is in a couple of weeks. Their last game, however, came in December on December 5th, so they have an even longer break than the Chippewas as uh, they lost a series to Sioux College just over the border in Sault Ste. Marie, Canada. 7-1 uh, and 3-1 respectively uh, on that opening weekend of December. As for the rest of Central Michigan Athletics, the only things going on today are gymnastics that started at 6 at Bowling Green University. You're going to watch on CSN or on the Chippewa Sports Network. You can go to cmuchippewas.com and click on the schedule. All the information is there, along with uh, wrestling taking on Northern Illinois at 7 p.m. in DeKalb. Illinois on you can watch that on ESPN plus tomorrow track and field takes part in the Michigan Invitational that starts at 11 a.m. Women's basketball starts at one on ESPN three at Ball State. You can listen to that one if you're in the Mount Pleasant area at WH or at 91.5 WH WFM that game from Muncie, Illinois again starting at 1 p.m. As for men's basketball, uh, they were scheduled to play Ball State, but that game has been postponed. That will not occur tomorrow. And then finishing out the slate on Sunday, SIUE uh, 
place host to Central Michigan's Wrestling Club in Edwards, Illinois, starting at uh, noon. And then South Dakota State hosts uh, wrestling at four, those both in Edwardsville, Illinois. Well, that will do it for our first intermission report here from Hertz Arena. We've got about six minutes before play is set to get underway for the second period. Devin Sarah will be back with the call for you right after this. You're listening to CMU D3 Club Hockey on CCHN. Back with you live inside the Hertz Arena here in Estero, Florida, getting set for second period action here from this first of two game weekend series here between the Florida Gulf Coast Eagles and the Central Michigan Chippewas. One notable update we do want to give you in this intermission report. Just two minutes left to go until we puck the drop the puck for second period. Isaac gives the leading score for the Chippewas in all point categories right now is off the ice right now with an unannounced injury. We will get to you an update later on on his condition. But right now the Chippewas could be shorthanded on the lines. He currently sits out there with Jay Nadu as well as Jacob Kosnick. So we could see Julian Johnson, the new addition from New Haven or rather uh, Riverview High School and Adrian Division Two come in for that line. So, Reagan, as you rejoin me here quickly, you talked a little bit in that intermission report about the sloppy play, about the Chippewas being out physicality, out skated, out shotted, and, and out shot, excuse me. And, and one of the things is right now, if, if we see Isaac Gibbs go off the ice, you're going to have to rely on somebody else now to get you some offense here. And, and if you count the quality shot totals, it's really 14 3 in favor of the Eagles. Yeah, the Chippewas. 
just they, they need to ramp up the physicality. They've been uh, they they've been a little bit on the soft like uh, they they've la been lacking in the physical uh, department at least through the first part of this game. They haven't been delivering the hits. They've I mean other other than that massive Gibbs hit Gibbs hit at the top of the left circle early on. The Chippewas haven't gotten a ton going at least phys physically in this hockey game and it's showing on the scoreboard and also they're just playing slow behind this Florida Gulf Coast team. They've been, uh, Florida's just been all over the ice and the Chippewas have been playing catch up since puck drop and they need to change that here in you know, the Reagan, second. I've heard a lot of analysts and a lot of players talk about when you get a step behind you're pushing against the grain and and I guess what that means is right now the Chippewas and at least in reference to this is they're just a step behind the play they're not getting to the areas they need to on defense and certainly not the areas they need to get scoring chances right but if you're in the second period here now you probably got to slow everything down settle your players down a little bit if you're coach Tyler Cataline and get back within one quickly because if you let Fortigo Coast get any more momentum this one could spiral out of control. Yeah, I would say almost just start to slow the puck down. If you can get the puck in your own zone, like just slow down, start the breakout, nice and simple. But that won't work because Florida Gulf Coast is doing a great job on the fourth check and the back check. And as I said, they're everywhere on this 200 by 80 sheet of ice. And Chippewas need to find a way to counter that here in the second period or it's going to be a long night. Uh, here down in Florida and a long series to boot. With a player down so far, we do not see Isaac Gibbs back out there on the ice or the bench. Actually, we do now. Excuse me. So update here from the players panel. Isaac Gibbs comes back out on the ice after leaving with two minutes left. He'll go back out there on the second line there with Jay Nadu and He's replacing him, Jacob Kosnick will be Andrew Porzondic. So they and reunite as we start second period of play here from Estero, Florida, 1949 in the first. This one's flipped already up inside the netting, protective zone of Florida Gulf Coast end. Yeah, and you uh, mentioned Gibbs coming back out. He's already getting into it with Sam Haley right off the, or right before the faceoff. He was getting into it on the near side right before the first period too. So this game, these guys are getting chippy on this uh, here in this hockey game. and. It's showing as players are getting frustrated. Isaac Gibbs, the freshman from Novi, Michigan, was the first freshman in CMU D3 history to average over a point per game through his first three, 13 games in club history. And he has points in all but four games this season as the play starts inside the Florida Gulf Coast zone. It's Kyle Chapman leaving it there for Jay Nadu. And that one was a quick shot attempt there from left to right. It's the Central Michigan Chippewas in there, maroon, yellow, and Yellow gold, excuse me, gold domes from right on the right side. The Florida Gulf Coast Eagles in their maroon, white, or excuse me, white, silver, and emerald green trim as they start out on the forecheck already in the first minute. Leaving it there with Skylar Pettingill over the way, blocked the pass attempt there, trying to dish it over the way to his forward, number 14, Haley, and he got roughed up hard against the points there by Kyle Chapman, and it'll start out. Chippewas the other way, Isaac Gibbs intended a long stretch pass there, but couldn't handle it from the stick of Andrew Porzonic. Diving play there by Porzonic, and here come, oh, the Eagles almost had the breakout there on the 2 on 0 there over Pettingill and the stick of number 12, Matthew Briggs, and that one, a shot attempt there from the slot by Isaac Gibbs, broken up. Yeah, on that shot there by Christopher Martin, it seemed like Styles was a little hesitant. He made that save on the blocker standing up, which is something typically you don't want to do as a goaltender. Is if you make that save, it could just drop right down below. Turnover, the Eagles end. Simon Sully at the left circle, dishes it for St. Andre, and it's off the skate of the defender there. David oh, oh, oh. Tyler Davidson has the only goal for the Eagles, unassisted in the first period. And now over the line is the lead score. Pettingill left in the slot. Shot attempt there, and Wolf has to say no with the crest of the CMU Central Michigan lettering. That was Evan McNamara taking the shot. 18-33 yeah, uh, left to go in the first. A uh, great save there by Thomas Rove. Uh, Skylar Pettingill undressed. Uh, undressed St. Andre at the defensive blue line before moving in. and. From behind the net, he made that pass to McNamara in front, and good movement there by Quick. Thomas Rofe to make that save. Quick face-off won by the Eagles. Tyler Davidson tried to skin it for the shot attempt, and it just went wide of Rofe. And now the Chippewas finally get it out to the near side half wall at center. Here comes Owen Campbell over the line. Makes one nice move to takes the shoulder there from the defender, Ciro's, and this one comes all the way back to Styles. This one, it handled behind his own zone, is Brady Walsh. 
Brady Walsh, the defender there for the Eagles. Number 15 there from Parkland, Florida. Played for the New Hampshire Junior Monarchs of the USPHL Premier. Leads team in all major categories, or excuse me, scored the last game in the 6-5 shutout, shootout win over UNCW and has points in three of his last four games. That's Brady Walsh. And now the Chippewas trying to match that effort here and get the goal here. Owen Campbell dumps the puck deep into the Florida Golf Coast zone. And now it comes to the far side half wall. Justin McComas taking away there the puck, James Rowe, and he'll send it to the other side there where Michael Rowe leaves it on his stick. Michael Rowe tried to dish it, fanned on the pass, and Kosnick took it away. Kosnick leaves it in his skates and drops it there for Keegan Moore. Keegan Moore takes a shot for the high slot of that one just wide of the near side goal post. The Chippewa starting four check here. Jacob Kosnick defended well by Brady Walsh all the way wide. Leaves it there for Moore. Back to the point for Hayes and it trickled all the way back out. Defended there by Blake Hartman. And this one's dumped back into the zone by Alex Lasky as the puck will change. And it goes back out here as we got a call coming up here. A cross check, Reagan. I didn't see who it was on, but uh, Thomas Rope went to the bench and it is looks like it's gonna be on Tyler Davidson. So he goes to the box at 2.57 and the Chippewas will go on their second power play of the game. Davidson off for cross checking. Chippewas 16 for th 12 for 60 on the season. Sitting at a 20, just over a 20% power play this season. Not the greatest totals, but looking to get even here with 16.55 in the second left. Charlie Hayes deflected, broken up. A shot attempt there from the point and on the breakout. Shorthanded is Matthew Briggs. Briggs over the wing there with Haley Samuel. Who took a shot of that one just off the blocker side of Rofe. And it comes back to the way. Here come the Chippewas on the other way. End to end here. Simon Selly over the line. Defended well there by Briggs. And we could see a penalty coming up here. Ray yeah, no, Brennan rather, Martin, Martin tripped yeah. over the line and slid in as Simon and Selly oh, and started approaching to the line. Yeah. He cut to his right and An it just happened that Brennan me. Martin yep. fell over the line and was sliding into the zone before that happened. So we'll have a draw across the way right in front of the Chippewa bench. An offside from the Chippewas on the breakout attempt. Leaves them with 130 left in this power play. 16-30, their second of the night. 0 for 1 so far. Looking to go 1 for 2. It's turned over by the Eagles. Jacob Toy now on the forecheck shorthanded. Nice defensive play in the skates of Simon Selly. To rear that one away. Leaves it there for Brendan Martin. Fanned on a dish over the way to Jacob St. Andre in the center ice. And this one's cleared all the way back down to their own end by Michael Rowe. Michael Rowe, the defenseman for the Eagles from Hastings, Minnesota. Has five goals, three assists, eight total points. Goes by Junya as his nickname on the team. And he had a goal and assist against UNCW, the North Carolina Wilmington Seahawks, on January 14th. And the Chippewas with a minute left trying to get in the forecheck. Inside the Eagles zone. Pours out and trying to center a feed for Simon Selly, and that one was broken up. This one comes to Simon Selly and his skates and behind the net, and it's taken over here by the Eagles. Nussbaum trying to clear it and came back to the point for Christopher Martin, using the blocker to keep it in, but now it comes back for an offside as just over the wing was poor Zodnik. 37 seconds in this power play, Reagan. A shot attempt at least just one early in the power play, but not a quality chance so far. We really haven't seen them get going in the power play when they've had the opportunity. Yeah, Chippewas have not been able to get going on this power play, though it did start a little bit of momentum swing as they've had uh, a couple more shots on goal here in this power play. Nadeau won the draw, left it for Lasky, and he dumped it to the zone. It comes to the near side half wall in the Eagles zone. For Andrew Porzondik. Porzondik and Martin try to keep it in the zone after Sozio tried to clear it. Now Nadu. Nadu plays tag there with Isaac Gibbs. Back to Porzondik at the high circle, blocked in front with the skates of Bradley Gordon. He's going to be feeling that one in the morning, and this one comes all the way back out the center. And with barring a miracle shot attempt, this will just about do it for the Chippewas power play. It's dumped deep into the zone by Lasky. Porzondik for a side fever, Nadu! Just wide of the goal after he went to the low slot for a one-timer attempt it's at the end of the power play. And here come the Eagles quickly over the line. Shot attempt there, the blocker side on row for that one by McGovern was blocked away. Great play in front there by uh, by Christopher Martin to knock that puck away as the pass came out in front. 
McGovern has it back, left it there for Robert Nussbaum. Another shot attempt there by McGovern, and that one was against that blocker side by Rofe. The Eagles now almost at 30 shots on the game, and Alex Lasky takes over. Flip this one out of the zone, and Jacob Kosnick pursues over there by James Rowe, trying to win the icing. He does, but it's still controlled by Roy, and he gets help over there with now Shea Matruska coming in. Matruska takes over, sends a puck, deep feet attempt for Pettingill, who didn't see it on his stick, and this one went all the way back as it was cleared by Kyle Chapman. Now, the Eagles controlling their own net. Turned over, though, as it's Jacob Kosnick. Kosnick turned it over once again, and the Eagles start the breakout. Two on one over the line. Here comes Skyler Pettingill with Tyler Briggs. Matthew Briggs, the centering feed, and that one missed on the blade. And that one, another shot attempt for the point by Shea Matruska went wide, and Hayes goes off the ice. That was a great play by the Chippewas. The defenseman coming back, laid down on the ice to take away that passing lane and forced Pettengill to saucer that pass and he missed his man. Over the line, poor Zondnik defended well there by Jared Searles. Clapper attempt from the forward Chapman. Now it comes with the slide to the low slide, it's loose. Still in front there, McComas can't get a shot off of that one. Blocked away a few times by the Eagles. Another centering feed attempt there from Kosnick. Didn't get there. And this one's still caught up at the far side corner now where Hayden Flynn tries to dig it out. Flynn along there with McComas. 13-20 left to go. The Eagles out shooting the Chippewas 28-18, but they've got some pressure here. Reitschuk now leaves this feed after the puck was... Freed up there. Jared Searles once again ties this puck up. A couple of times this is happening, Reagan, but the Chippewas still trying to get possession in the zone, and they might they might call this one a whistle or a penalty delay again. Something's got to clear this oh, puck. It's Reichuk trying goodness. to send it up, and this one couldn't see some more as we got an eagle laying down on the ice right now. It looks like an injured eagle. That's Tyler Davidson. Yeah, he, uh, he was holding... Uh, Martin stick in the scrum down behind Thomas or behind Nick Styles, and that was drawn some cries from the Chippewa contingent of fans to our right here. But there's a bit of or pardon me, that was Ben Reichek who was getting his stick held down there in that scrum, and uh, they exchanged a couple of words, but nothing forthcoming. Davidson still messing around with his helmet there. You know, Reagan, that's probably, as I count on my hand, the ninth time we've seen a puck get stopped at some end of the boards where the, the other side could clear it out, and the referees haven't called anything to that point. They let that go forever until there was a call, and Reagan, you're not happy about something. What's they, going on there? They completely missed the holding the stick penalty committed by Davidson in that scrum. Reichek was trying to pry his stick free. Davidson was holding on to it for dear life like he's uh, trying to save himself from drowning and then the stick's his only lifeline. So puck comes free now to center ice after the Eagles won the draw. This one flips around a few times and comes to the blade of Reichuk. Goes cross ice there for Charlie Hayes. Hayes dumps the puck deep into the zone and it bounced off the end boards and went straight to the glove of Styles for a stoppage of play. If you're looking for pictures of CMU hockey, look no further than Instagram. The fantastic Tristan Hagenstein takes some great pictures and the best of them can be found at the Instagram at Tristan Hagenstein Photography. Alex Lasky will come out here for the Chippewas, the senior defenseman, fifth season from Jackson, Michigan. Recorded an assist in his return from injury in his first game against Adrian on December 9th. And they're looking for more. As here comes Jacob Toy, the captain, as he tried to send one wide. And for intended his defender there, that was number 27, Michael Rowe, just couldn't find it. And that one went wide to the far side corner now inside the Chippewa zone. It's tied up once again at the boards and Rychuk's talking to Toy down on the ice right now after he fell. He's probably not happy after that scrum as you mentioned from Tyler yeah. Davidson holding his stick. A couple of players tie up now. Tag it up is Charlie Hayes with Alex Lasky. Turn it over in his own end after it was intended there for Hayden Flynn and dropping the tailor is Toy. Toy now skates around Rychuk. Goes back to the point there for number eight. A quick shot attempt deflected and fought it. Oh, oh, oh. Rowe saw it the whole way, luckily, as James Rowe took the shot, and it was intended to be deflected by Sozio. Rowe was lucky on that one. Michael Rowe was standing directly in front of Thomas Rowe. He's back to his face, and he deflected that puck, and Thomas Rowe dropped down to the butterfly and was in the right place at the right time as he was able to corral that puck on that deflected shot. Taking the face-off draw here will be number 26, Logan Bethwick, the forward from Bar Harbor in Maine. Last had a point against Davenport on October 17th. Looking to get on the board as he won the draw, but it came to the far side corner. Now the Eagles control. 
Back to the point. It's James Rowe. Rowe took a shot that went wide and it was met up there by Shane Matruska at the point. Playing defense. And this tipped in front a couple of times and trying to push it home there. Unsuccessfully was Anthony Sozio. And here come the chips on the breakout. Over the blue line. Left it there for Martin as he took a back hit and it went wide. It comes free now to Simon Silly. That one was fed there in front by Christopher Martin but just not able to put it home with 11.20 to go in this second period. A much better period so far than the first 10 minutes of the period, Reagan. Yeah, Chippewas have been able to stem the flow at least of uh, Florida Gulf Coast shots. And now here's uh, St. Andre diving after a puck. St. Andre dove up for the puck and kept them on the forecheck. It's a big hit is laid there to Simon Selly. He is absolutely wobbled by Matruska, but he gets back up. Owen Campbell now. Sees it there and drops the trailer for him. At the far side, at half wall inside the Florida Gulf Coast zone. They turn the puck over again and Shane Matruska gets it out. Dump deep into the zone there by Marcos Pecky as he just tried to get off for a, a change. We'll let the Chippewas reset. Brendan Martin intended a stretch pass for Owen Campbell that missed on him, but no icing was called. As St. Andre moves over the line, he controls once again, trying to block off the defender there. That was Samuel Haley, and they start a three-on-one coming here. Haley over the line with Pettingill. Pettingill for the backhander, didn't get the shot off, and Rofe found it with a glove, and Pettingill's getting roughed up by three Chippewas here. And We've that's got a more. dumb penalty by Brendan Martin. He comes in well after the play, and lights up, lights up his... Man behind the net, that's gonna draw a penalty here. Uh -oh, we might here have we go. One Samuel the Haley out there with, that looks like Simon Selly throws his stick. He is absolutely furious on the ice right now. We might get a couple of penalties here as Haley flung Simon Selly's stick away. We'll see what the penalties are here as we sort them out down below us with at the, the 10.25 left here. Reagan, you saw that was initiated by Brendan Martin, but this could be a power play as it looks like there was some sort of boarding from Samuel Haley after the play that might have been initiated by Brendan Martin, but it looks like the referees gather at the center ice referee area trying to assess the penalties. In the box currently is number 14, Samuel Haley for the Eagles, the rookie defenseman had a goal and assist against Notre Dame. Has and nobody's in the penalty box has for the Chippewa. The games this season, as it looks like it's going to be a penalty here. Yeah. It looks like I called it, Reagan. It looks like Haley came in late in the play and boarded Brendan Martin to the to to the end boards, and that's why that there was such a scuffle behind the net. But nonetheless, it's going to send the Chippewas to their third power play tonight. So far, yeah. 0 for 2. This is something they absolutely need right here. Yeah, so far on the season, they're 12 for 61, 19.57 on the power play here. Florida Gulf Coast coming in 10th in the nation. As the Chippewas won the faceoff draw, but it was sent out of the zone deep there by the defender. That was Matthew Briggs. And Rofe has to settle it down on his stick. Leaves it there for Kyle Chapman. Chapman skates through center. Goes to the wing for Isaac Gibbs on the far side. Skates over the blue line there with Korzonic. Takes a quick shot, and that was blocked by the knob of the stick. And that one comes free to Jay Nadu now. Back to the point for Christopher Martin. Martin, down low to Nadu. Nadu took the shot, and that one was blocked in front. Nice defensive stand there by Brady Walsh on the skate. It's still free, however, as Christopher Martin lost it at the point, and it comes all the way back down to Rofe, who has to leave it there and send it to Kyle Chapman as both teams will change. Yeah, good work by the Chippewas to break out here. It was a bad pass to the blue line that forced them to do so, but good job getting the puck deep here. Simon Selly takes a hard hit at the near side boards just in front of us from number 19, Bradley Gordon. And this puck's now at the end boards. It's Porzonic now trying to send one in front and Styles said no with the left pad. It comes free to Charlie Hayes. Hayes back to Porzonic, the near side corner half wall. Porzonic skates gingerly, leaves a pass intended there for Bradley, Brendan Martin and it was flipped up in the blade by Anthony Solzio. Now Solzio turns it over. Brendan Martin gets it back. Martin, the captain, sends one to the net, and that one's gloved down by Styles. He says no with it. We're going to get some more from Isaac Gibbs and Blake Hartman here. Yeah, great save there by Styles. Uh, Martin had the puck at the high slot. He let a low wrist shot go, and Styles was able to My make the, the save lamp, Reagan. off the deflection. Yeah, Brennan Martin, you're light the lamp, although nobody's touched the score sheet for, <laughs> for any of our players, but uh, we'll see as we go on if the Chippewa can get any points on the board. Face off Face on the off offensive end here. Gingerly won by the Eagles, uh, number 12, Matthew Briggs. 
Matthew Briggs, the forward from Clayton, New York. He's second on the team in goals, assists, and points only by Pettingill on this team. And he has points in 10 of his last 11. But here comes Owen Campbell over the line. Owen Campbell, the star freshman there from Jackson, Lumen Christie, trying to get some offense going. Here's St. Andre now. Back for Hayes. Blocked in front after a screen attempt from Simon Selly, and it's easily sent to the protector of Styles after the one last shot attempt in the power play. This will end it with technically one second left in the power play, but they'll probably just end it off the faceoff draw as Samuel Haley will come out of the box for that boarding call to send them to the power play. Shots now 31-20 in favor of the Eagles. And, and by my count now, Reagan, they've gotten, it looks like, 14 shots in just the last 18 minutes alone. Yeah, so the Chippewas have, since that, since that, uh, since the end of the first period, have basically kept pace with the Eagles here in the shots on goal category. Now inside the Chippewa zone, the Eagles turn it over. And now here comes Hartman to the slot. Hartman takes it a few times, blocked away by a few players, and now sends it there for a shot attempt. That was Mevin McNamara, but it just trickled a few times wide off the skates of Jacob Kosnick. And now it comes free to up the wing. Here comes Keegan Moore. Keegan Moore, the junior, trying to get it through center and was knocked away there by Skylar Pettingu who comes off the ice and get fresh bodies for the Eagles. Stretch pass attempted there. The Chippewas could have called that one down but they didn't and Reagan we got a little bit of frustration here. He, there was a Chippewa player that tipped it before the red line. That shouldn't be icing typically but for some reason they called it Icing, even though it was tipped before the red line. This officiating crew, home of Florida Gulf Coast, each team has a set of home refs they use for every ACHA game. And so these ones stationed in the state of Florida do just about every single game for Florida Gulf Coast. Yeah, and this is a bit of an odd crew. They're working with two referees and one, one linesman here today as that trickles in on roof. So the referees are kind of splitting linesman duties on icings and whatnot. So. Keegan Moore lost that shot attempt, but like you were saying, Reagan, yeah, a short officiating crew, maybe not seeing the ice all the way through, but they really are calling things sort of gingerly here. Yeah. That's a good, for lack of a better term to put it, they're not calling everything that maybe we see so far. Yeah. So the face off back inside the Chippewa's own zone from left to right. And this one's taken over here by the Eagles. It's Tyler Davidson, had the only goal earlier tonight. Back to the point there, a couple of quick passes, roll to the net, and that one. Great tip there. Set there, tipped by wide Evan by Rowe. As it goes back free in front once again, and this one has to be pursued in by Owen Campbell. The Eagles, some nice pressure here to get it on Rowe. A couple two shot attempts already in the last five seconds. This one comes free now to the other side of the end boards. This one inside the Chippewa zone, taken away there from Tyler Davidson by Jacob St. Andre. And St. Andre pursues a couple of players. This one's not free as we're gonna look like a fight's almost initiated by Tyler Davidson as he lost his stick, pushing off St. Andre. Good save and his there. stick's still down on the ice, and a nice save there by Rofe. This one flipped into the, the center ice zone by Joey Simon Selly. It comes free there as it was sent back by Giarmina to his blade. Owen Campbell through center. One on one with Shee Matruski. Matruski defended that one well and he wasn't able to get it past there. Owen Campbell. And this one now a breakout attempt here. Here comes Pettingill. Rather, it was Sozio with the shot and that one played saved, saved by the blade of Rofe. Inside the Chippewa zone once again. Last guess to flip this out of the zone. Owen Campbell tried to take it with his hand, and this one still free. The Eagles trying to settle it down. They don't, and Owen Campbell now up the wing with Jacob St. Andre to the far side wing. Moves one defender side. Takes the shot, he scores! Goes far side, top shelf, and Jacob St. Andre's tied this game at one. What a goal by Jacob St. Andre. He held up at the left point. He moved into the top of the left circle, avoided a check there, and he, as he was being knocked down from a player coming across the ice, fires it into the top right corner. A laser of a shot, and the Chippewas have tied this game on their 21st shot of night. Jacob St. Andre, his sixth goal of the season, 13 points. And now that is his 11th point in his last six games and has goals in five of his last six. And who else? Jacob St. Andre to get the chips even with just six. Ten left to go in the second period of play. What an effort by Jacob St. Andre. And now the Chippewas look to come back here. Over the line after the center ice face-off win there. We'll wait for the official assist total, but he might be unassisted here. As it comes now into the Chippewa zone. Alex Lasky, number 12,
gets the assist out there along with Charlie Hayes. So Lasky and Hayes get the assist there off Jacob St. Andre's goal. And this one the Chippewa zone pursued as the Eagles try to answer. Back to the point now. Here's defending this ride Chuck after a shot attempt. It's free in front a couple of times. And that one turned aside by the goaltender, Rofe. Man, what an effort there by the Eagles. But here come the Chippewas on the way. Right chuck with line. One on one there against Brady Walsh. Takes a shot, the same angle where St. Andre scored top of the left circle. And we're going to get some more behind the net. Here we go. Right chuck in there. Along with number 26, that's the new guy, Julian Johnson, getting roughed up there from number 19, Bradley Gordon. Yeah, Julian Johnson crashed the net. He didn't touch Styles, but. Hey, but uh, David, or pardon me, that's Bradley Gordon came in and absolutely lit up Johnson behind the net. And that, it, that, uh, that bout of frustration from the Eagles will put the Chippewas on their fourth power play of the night for roughing. Gordon goes off and the Chippewas, who are 19.35% of the power play, get another chance here in this second period, their the third ice, of the period. The ice could be tilting here. Reagan at the Chippewas, their fourth power play of the night. Look to follow up here after the penalty for roughing assess to Bradley Gordon. It'll be taking the draw, Jay Nadeau, and he won it. Christopher Martin gets absolutely decked at the point there by Matthew Briggs, hit his head hard on the ice and trying to crash that as they do there. Over there with last, he took a shot near side was Isaac Gibbs and Styles had to send the blade deep to get the save there. What a hit there, Christopher Martin. I hope he's okay, yeah, he's skating around certainly. so far, roughing, circling in the Florida Gulf Coast end. And he got absolutely leveled there by Matthew Briggs. Yeah, uh, the fans, this is just a reminder that the Get, that the broadcast of today's game is a copyrighted presentation of the Michigan, of the American Collegiate Hockey Association and the CMU Club Hockey Network. No reproduction, retransmission, or other distribution of the descriptions or accounts of this game may take place without the express written consent of the ACHA and CCHN. Face off one by the chest and went all the way back to their own zone. Jay Nadeau skates in for the right circle, takes a shot near side off the blocker of Styles, and it goes up and out of play. Oh, oh, oh. What, what a shot. The power play. What a shot there by Nadeau. He put it a little high, but. Styles was able to deflect that up, it, up and out of play with his blocker. You know what, Reagan, I've noticed the Chippewas have a lot more pep in their step. They're absolutely winning the races to the pucks. They're passing the puck much better inside the offensive zone. And more than anything, they finally got it even. They can turn the momentum in their favor on this power play. Yeah, so Jay Nadeau still out here, the second group out here for the Chippewas with Isaac Gibbs and Andrew Porzonic. Face off one that time by the Eagles and a clear attempt blocked down by Isaac Gibbs in the half wall. Now Christopher Martin tried to send one deep to the zone and that one turned over as a race for it. Anthony Solzio shorthanded, knocked off the puck, the pair of 28s is sent to the net and Rove has to make the glove oh. stop. And we get some more once again behind the net at the near side. Solzio is sent down to the ice, but rather that's Blake Hartman and he gets up slowly as the refs talk to a group of players in front of Rove. We're going to get some more here. Assessed 114. Let's go with this power play. 436 in the second period. You're listening live to Central Michigan versus Florida Gulf Coast live from Estero, Florida in the Hertz Arena, home of the Florida Everblades, the uh, affiliates of the Milwaukee Admirals, the Nashville Predators of both the AHL and NHL here in the minor leagues. And, and what a beautiful rink this is, Reagan. You've talked about how low the boards here on the uh, yeah. the, the, the near side here on the far side too, just past the blue lines, but what a place to be for what is a huge matchup in this ACHA is, Division This three. has been a fantastic atmosphere for a, hockey. Anthony Sozio was down to the ice for a moment, but skidding in deep in the zone is Christopher Martin. Turns one wide and center, side to center feed for Simon Selly, who couldn't handle the shot attempt. It's still free out of the half wall to the far side. Losing his stick in Martin, he's got his helmet off right now. And we're going to get a stoppage of play for that. As here we go, it's Sozio and Martin. Martin, Martin sets it down to the go. ice. In there is Simon Selly. The gloves coming off. A couple of players fighting in there. It's now Simon Selly. Simon Selly throws oh, a punch oh, on right Sozio. He's got to stay on the bench. bench. And he's going to send him off. Sozio's done. Sozio, Anthony Sozio sent off the ice by the referees as he threw a punch on Simon Selly. And they're still down on the ice in front of the Chippewa bench. It's Jacob St. Andre there. Blake Hartman's got his helmet off. This Mike is, James Rowe is there. And we're going to go with Pony's assessed. And this Chippewa crowd has come alive, Reagan. This game has gotten well out of hand. Brennan Martin had his helmet knocked off. The whistle blew. And then Sozio... Uh, 
roughed him up a little bit without his helmet, and the fireworks blew up here at Hertz Arena, and at the 15-48 mark, we're gonna have a lot of penalties assessed. So we're waiting for the penalties to be assessed, but the big story of this scrum, Anthony Sozio is done in this game. He'll get the game misconduct, he'll get off the ice, and, he and that's will gonna put them down. And also something to note, he will be disqualified for the next game, assuming that is a fighting penalty against him. Absolutely, so, so similar to Jordan yeah, Cooper, who exactly. he's out for this game for a fighting penalty. And Reagan, we're gonna wait for penalties to be assessed here. 14, 12 left to go in the second period. 50 seconds left in that power play. Man advantage for the Chippewas after the penalty assessed to Bradley Gordon for roughing and the new guy, Julius Johnson. But you wanna talk about the Sparks fly. In the first period, it was sort of lackadaisical, just one side and now it's sort of come alive here for both sides. Styles had to make some great saves. The shot total is officially 36-23 in favor of the Eagles. And we're still waiting for penalties to be assessed here over at the referee's scoring table. And Kelly Hayes over there with Keelan. Moore. And it looks like Martin's staying on the ice even though he was in a scrum. So he didn't, he's not getting sent off, but he's at least gonna sit in the box for a while. And we'll, we'll wait to see the announcement on the penalties here, but this, th that, that scrum got this crowd on their feet, especially the group that made the 1,500 mile trip down here to Estero from Mount Pleasant. And uh, it's, it's been an electric atmosphere here in Hertz Arena thus far. For the Chippewas off the ice right now in the penalty box, it will be the captain, Brendan Martin, the sixth year senior from Novi, Michigan right now. Trying to get his team back within one, or up one in this game. He's ranked first in assists and first among defensemen in all scoring categories. And for D3 Central Michigan Hockey, in 148 games played, Reagan, he has 71 goals, 87 assists, 158 points. But more notably, he talked about this in the Hockey House podcast, that he's going to stick up for his players as it looks like there's a couple of players talking to Anthony Sozio off ice here. In our broadcasting perch, we sit just opposite of the benches and just above where both the team's locker rooms are. And we're seeing some more stuff off the ice here. And Anthony Sozio's talking to a teammate right now. There's players and fans looking over the awnings here of the upper deck to see what's going on. But it'll be Anthony Sozio sent off the ice as a fan laughingly waves at our photographer, or rather <laughs> social media guy here, Joe Grogan, here with us for this Florida trip. So as the penalties are being assessed here for both teams, we'll take a break real quick. Stay with us. You're listening live to Central Michigan D3 Hockey here from CHN. Back with you live here inside Hertz Arena from Estero, Florida as we sit at a 1-1 tie between the Central Michigan Chippewas and Florida Gulf Coast Eagles waiting for a penalty penalties to be assessed to both teams after a scrum in front of the Central Michigan bench occurred after it looks like Brennan Martin took a hard hit from Anthony Sozio that led to Anthony being sent off the ice by a pair of players. But how about the game of catch going on in front of us <laughs> by the goaltenders, yeah. Reagan, by goaltenders Nicholas Stow and Thomas Rofe. 
as it looks like we're going to have a Chippewa set off the ice here really quick. That's Ben Rychuk. Rychuk, yeah, ben once Rychuk. again, gets a game misconduct. And if, if this is a fighting misconduct, he's out for the next two games because he's already been suspended for fighting. And if he yeah. has been, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a game misconduct and it's a two-game suspension instead of the or at because it's, this is his second fight of the season. To catch you up to speed a little bit in the first period, the Gulf Port of Gulf Coast Eagles went up one nothing after Tyler Davidson crashed the net and finished off the first power play of the night for the Eagles with a goal to put them up one nothing. As it went to the second period, it was all Eagles to the first with out shooting the the. Chippewas 24 to 7 in that period and as the second period rolled on the Chippewas went to a few power plays unsuccessfully but back on 5 on 5 it was Jacob St. Andre scoring top shelf from the top of the left circle to knock this game at 1 and after a couple of penalties the Chippewas went to the power play after a roughing penalty was assessed to number 19 that was Bradley Gordon and afterwards, a fight broke out in front of the Chippewa bench that's now recurring with 4-12 left to go in the second that the referees are trying to assess. And Reagan, this is absolutely yeah. boiled over here. and We're just waiting to see what's assessed. It certainly has. And uh, we were mistaken. We saw Ben Rychek go off. And it was actually, they were in need of water bottles. So oh. he went off <laughs> and got one. Of course, we, we, we've been conditioned to yeah. think that Ben well, Rychek well, is the based on Based on what just happened, <laughs> yeah. the temper is boiling over. Oh, these two rival teams got into it. You know, anything's possible. Oh, we just certainly. saw Souls just off the ice. Martin's in the box. Yeah. Martin's going to get the four minute here for the fighting, which is kind of justified. Yeah. But if you want to look at anything, it's the fact that now after this, both teams are going to go back to a four on four. And a five minute's going to be assessed to Anthony Sozio. So a, a pair of power plays will be shared by both these teams. Or rather, four on four for the... The power play will be assessed to the Chippewas with just a minute left at the end of this period leading over to the third period to catch you up. There's a 50-second roughing penalty assessed to number 19. Yes, That's Bradley Gordon. There's a four-minute fighting for Brendan Martin and a 28-minute game misconduct or five-minute game misconduct for Anthony Sozio, Reagan. Yeah, my guess is it's going to end up being a double minor for roughing on uh, um, on Brennan Martin along with a five minute major to Anthony Sozio. My guess is for a rough or a check to the head or something to do with that because typically the, fight, the fighting is just a disqualification. We apologize for the uh, delay on the score graphic. We got <laughs> caught up in all the action. It all coming within two minutes. St. Andre tying up the hockey game at 13.50 and then Sozio. This here as we are back underway. We resume play now after five minutes of settling the penalties. Now it'll be four on four hockey here for just about five minutes. As I excuse me, Reagan's correcting me. Four on three after the roughing, a double roughing assessed to Anthony Sozio. As right now, as we resume play, 3.47 left to go in this second period of play. The Chippewas on this four on three power play out here. Andrew Porzonic, Jacob St. Andre, Owen Campbell, and Christopher Martin. As here comes a two on one for the Eagles. It's McCormick with the shot near side, and that one turned aside by the goaltender Rofe. That was Robert Nussbaum, excuse me, taking the shot. And now trying to skate in deep into the Chippewa zone is Matthew Briggs. Here come the Chippewas the other way now. Owen Campbell over the line. Trying to assign Nussbaum, and he left it there, dropping the trailer for Porzadnik, who dumped it deep. Just 3.05, 315 left to go in the second period. And the Eagles, after a broken stick there, now it allows the Chippewas to break out. Here comes Matthew Briggs, back to the bench here, and the Chippewas pursuing it. It's Jacob St. Andre over there with Nussbaum. Leaves it there for Pettingill along with Blake Hartman on this four on three. Nadeau has skated in the Chippewas, trying to get Booth personnel out here to turn the puck over. Sent deep into the zone by Nussbaum for Nadeau. Drops it there with Lasky. Lasky ties up for Hayes and he drops it there at the far side half wall. This one dumped back into the zone by the Eagles where Alex Lasky plays it. Jay Nadeau now drops that one near side and will pick this one. Scooped up there by number 14 for the Eagles. That was Samuel Haley but instantly lost it. Left it there for Isaac Gibbs. Gibbs turns his hand a couple of players and allows them to reset. Gibbs made a few nice dangles, but it was the wrong way as it allowed the Eagles to reset. Pucks deflected up in the air, and it comes back out to center where Gibbs resets. Gibbs goes wide through center. Tries to go blue line to blue line. Decides one defender. Takes a shot, he scores! Near side, Isaac Gibbs gets the Chihuahuas up 2-1. to one. 
on the four on three. And that's another shot that beats Styles' high glove side. Both the Chippewas goals have been ripped into the top right corner as we're looking at it here in the second period. And the Chippewas with two unanswered goals from St. Andre and now Isaac Gibbs gets them on the board and ahead here in this hockey game. What a big goal there by Isaac Gibbs. Isaac Gibbs notches his goal leading, team leading 10th of the season. Isaac Gibbs, the star freshman, turned aside four different, or rather three different Florida Gulf Coast defenders and made a nice move to risk one pass. Styles on the glove side, similar to the goal scored by Jacob St. Andre earlier in this period. And it puts the Chippewas up for the first time in this game with 155 left to go in the game. Her second period, excuse me. And this one now taken over by the Eagles in the zone. A quick shot near side, attempted there by Giaramita of the Eagles. And Rose says no with the glove. Isaac Gibbs, what an effort from him. And really, the two leading scores for the Chippewas setting the tone. And we talked about it in the pregame show, Reagan, that it was gonna need to be those leading scores for them to get this scoring total going. Yeah, for Isaac Gibbs, that's his 10th goal in 13 games. Look out, here's a shot there by an Osbob. That whistle just wide on the near side. Now Spalmer has to retrieve this puck back in his own net, and this one after the shot attempt is left there for Gordon Bradley back on the back on the ice. Bradley Gordon ran into the ref was Nussbaum and allows a breakout chip. Here's Justin McComas on the line. One on one the Styles trying to wrist her and fan on the shot attempt. And that one comes free to the point. The Chippewa still control on the board check in that one. A quick shot taken from Keelan Baker at the top of the stat. And stop to play with 122 left in the second. Yeah, honestly, I think it's kind of good that Justin McComb has missed on that breakaway because the entire reason he had the puck at his own blue line was the fact that the uh, Eagle, who was pinching down in the offensive zone, ran into the uh, linesman and uh, and ended up uh, giving the Chippewas a good chance there. So in the end, e things even out, at least on that play here. 116 to go here in period number two. Big hit laid inside the Chippewa zone on Kyle Chapman. Another one by Isaac Gibbs, or rather Jacob Kosnick, and that's gonna result in a stoppage of play here as it looks like he's taken down to the ice for some extracurriculars. We're gonna have a penalty oh, coming McComas up. Oh, McComas is going after uh, Go Bradley Gordon. And are they gonna send? They're gonna send, it looks Wait, like Jacob so they're giving, Kosnick off. They're giving Mc Thomas off, they're gonna McComas. probably give him a misconduct here, which Haley was taunting him. I don't know why Haley, or I don't Kyle know. Kyle Chapman gets one as well for the hit late. No, so. no, Chapman's going in to serve the penalty you on. You are right, yep, you are right. Yeah, Chapman's in the box for the penalty, and then uh, Chapman's in the box for the penalty, McComas is in the box for the game misconduct. There is now four Chippewas inside their own penalty box. Brendan Martin joined with Joey Simoncelli, Kyle Chapman, and it looks like Justin McComas. So with 108 left to go in this second period, we're gonna have a trio of minor penalties coming up here for both teams. Brendan Martin still assessing the minor penalty for the fight. We'll go to the box along with, they've given it to Kyle Chapman who will serve this penalty in the box. Anthony Solzio still gets has that minor penalty up or major penalty, excuse me, up on the board with two minutes left in that. So it looks like when this is all said and done to start the third period, a minute into that third, it will be an Eagles power play, but at the hands of a Justin McComas penalty, as the referees try to assort this one out, Blake Hartman's over there talking with the linesman to get this one assessed. And yeah, there's Reagan, a, a really crazy string in the last nine minutes. We've seen a fight, a pair of goals scored, a couple of minor penalties, a player set off, and it's all boiling over here. Maybe this is repercussions from October 16th. Yeah, maybe. These teams had bad blood then, and they get it now. The good news is for the chip ones, they're only going to have to serve about a minute of this power play as Brennan Martin comes out of the box in 54 seconds. But with only a minute left in the period. So a misconduct penalty is assessed to Justin McComas, and that will send him to the box for two minutes, as it allows the Eagles now to start on their four on three power play. This one's sent deep into the zone by Hartman, and he couldn't handle the pass attempt from Nussbaum. And this one's sent out of the zone by Jacob St. Andre, as they'll all reset. 42 seconds to go in the second period. You're listening live to the number six and number eight Central Michigan Chippewas, Florida Gulf Coast Eagles, playing here from Estero, Florida. 
Chippewas won the first game of the series, and now the Eagles trying to answer. Here comes over the line Blake Hartman. Now skating wide with it. A centering pass intended. Matthew Briggs there for Nussbaum missed on him, and he has to go back to retrieve it. Now Simon Selly shorthanded moves into the zone. His own zone. And he leaves it there for Keelan Baker. Baker will send this one off to kill off more time with just 15 seconds left. The Eagles might charge one more four check here before the end of the period. Up the wing for Nussbaum. To the near side, it comes for Briggs. Briggs with three seconds left. Looks to get one more shot off for a centering feed. And the period will come to a close after a wraparound chance in front. And we're going to get some extracurriculars in front by Christopher Martin and Blake Hartman. There's Julian the Johnson sounds. getting into it out in front of the net. A recent addition to the Central Michigan squad here over the break. Defending his new goaltender, Thomas Rofiers. We will head to the break. After 40 minutes of play, the Chippewas lead it 2-1 here at Hertz Arena. It'll be four on four when we come back for another 48 seconds. Second intermission report coming up next.
Back with you live inside the Hertz Arena here in Estero, Florida, as the second period intermission happens here live from Estero, Florida. You're listening live to CCHN Central Michigan Hockey here as they rejoin us. A chaotic second period just witnessed here from both sides between Florida Gulf Coast and Central Michigan as we're going to give you a recap here of the period real quick presented by CMHIceHockey.com as we look towards the second period. And starting it out was the game-tying goal off the stick of Jacob St. Andre off a top, goes top shelf on the goaltender Nicholas Stiles after a centering feed from Alex Lasky and Charlie Hayes. They get the goal here with 13.50 into the period. That is St. Andre's 10th goal against Florida Gulf Coast, and that's his sixth of the season to put him second in goal totals. He now has 11 points in his last six games and goals in five and six of those games. The other goal scored by Isaac Gibbs, 17.48 into the second period as he unassisted that goal and roofed it near side on the goaltender Styles from the exact same place St. Andre scored that goal as well and a very good effort from the Chippewas much better than being outshot in the first period the shots for this period were 19-18 in favor of the Chippewas where rather in the first period it was 24 to 14 in favor of Florida Gulf Coast so Central Michigan doing a lot better job getting the shots on goal making it tough for the goaltender Styles will look really quick to our out of town scoreboards for the Griffins. It is their game tomorrow being played against the Milwaukee Admirals, who are the AHL affiliate of the Florida Everblades here in Estero, Florida, just outside of Fort Myers. And that game is set for a 7 p.m. puck drop for tomorrow. As the Saginaw Spirit, now we turn to that game tonight, play the Flint Firebirds from the Dort Financial Center. They fall in that game six to three after the Firebirds had a strong third period scoring four unanswered to put the game away on the Spirit. And now that game, which had the shot totals officially in the favor of Saginaw, 31 to 30, they fall in that game. As for the Detroit Red Wings, they are taking on the Dallas Stars right now, currently in overtime as a 4-4 tie ensues on the four on four overtime right now. The Stars do have a power play in the overtime, so awaiting the result of that game. We'll let you know as soon as we know an update from Detroit as far as that one goes. As for the rest of the NHL right now, the Carolina Hurricanes and the New York Rangers play today. The Rangers won that game 6-3 to after a strong effort from Ryan Reeves against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Not enough to put them against Hurricanes. They go to 27-8-2 on the season. The Penguins and the Blue Jackets played tonight. The Penguins win that one, holding the top spot in that first wild card position in the Eastern Conference ahead of the Boston Bruins currently. They win tonight and continue that trend, winning over the Blue Jackets 5-2. The Red Wings and Dallas Stars play with 2.24 left in the overtime period. The Stars on a power play in overtime, as I mentioned, awaiting the results. The Islanders took down the Coyotes tonight. The Coyotes continue their season woes as the bottom of the league next to the Montreal Canadiens. The Islanders' dominant performance at home. The Wild and the Blackhawks play in the second period. At the end of that, it's the Wild up 5-0 on the Blackhawks ahead of that game. And we'll await the third period scores in that one. The Panthers and the Canucks just had tip-off there from the Canucks Ice Arena in Vancouver. That game we'll give you an update on as soon as we know. Now time to turn it back to this game to give you a penalty report on what's happened so far. And let me tell you folks, there is a lot to unravel. So bear with me on this as I read you through it. In the first period, it was Tyler Davidson taking a cross check 257 into the second that led to the first power play, or second power play for the Chippewas tonight. They went 0 for 2 for that. Then it was number 15 for the Eagles. That was Bailey taking the penalty there after a cross check. Once again, 938 into the period. That one didn't allow the Chippewas to score a power play goal as well. Then things get absolutely interesting. It's Gordon from the Eagles taking a roughing penalty just 14-18 into the period. That one was assessed later on for a cross-checking penalty. So Bradley Gordon went to the box and then things boiled over in front of the Chippewa bench after a scrum ensued by Anthony Sozio and Brendan Martin. That one 
caused a penalty for Anthony Sozio to be assessed a game misconduct and a game possibly a suspension coming soon after engaging in an altercation and the official penalty abuse of refs for that one as Brendan Martin went to the box, Kyle Chapman went for the fight, and then later on in the period, it was Kyle Chapman taking the tripping penalty. Once again, Justin McComas got a game misconduct, and that's where the chips lie. So officially on the scoreboard, 52 seconds left in the tripping penalty assessed to Kyle Chapman, 28 seconds left in the game misconduct, and the major penalty assessed to Anthony Sozio. It'll send the Chippewas only to roughly a 40, or rather, the Eagles to a four second power play as we resume the period play here. Getting set for third period action here from Florida as shot totals in favor of the Eagles right now. 38-25 after a chaotic second period from both sides. Reagan Cleans will join me back on the sticks here as both teams get ready to come back on the ice here for third period action. And Reagan, or rather we'll wait for him to come back in this score as we'll step aside for just one moment. Stay with us. Back with you inside. Hertz Arena inside Estero, Florida here. The Chippewas in game one of their two game weekend series against the Florida Gulf Coast and what will be three for a season series. The Chippewas won the first game three to one against the Florida Gulf Coast Eagles on October 16th. And since that time, the Florida Gulf Coast Eagles have gone 10 and three in their last 13. The Chippewas have gone 9, 2, 0 oh, and two in the last 13. Looking to go to 10, 2, 0 oh, and two. The Eagles trying to match the even series here as he resumed third period play. Both teams back onto the ice here. Reagan, I just explained what was probably the most chaotic second period of the season for both sides of the ice and what now the tempers are boiling over. We're seeing the fighting getting out of hand. We're seeing a player set off the ice. We saw a pair of goals from CMU's top goal scorers. I don't know how you can top that for the third period now coming yeah, up. It's pretty hard to top that, but one thing that would top it certainly would be a Central Michigan win. They need to continue to use that pressure that they've had at least through the second period. They need to get good shots on Styles. Both those shots that uh, that Styles let in were rifles into the top right corner over his glove hand. They need to exploit that apparent weakness in Styles to be able to uh, control this game, and they just need to keep with keep their heads up. They you know, can't they can't just skate around. They have to keep their composure here. They're playing with a lead, and they can't take any bad penalties. They can't let Florida Gulf Coast get any more momentum here. Hey Reagan, deep yeah. breath in and out. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to have none of that in this if, third period. If, if, if you can't tell, tensions are high here. Tensions are very high indeed. And you know, you, just to, to follow your point, you talked about exploiting that glove side of the goaltender, Styles. They score for the exact same place at the top of the dots, Reagan. And they're going to be noting that. I'm sure Luke Tyler Cadillac is searching vigorously on his scoring chart, that area of the ice, getting it to the goaltender, Styles, who's been excellent for them this season as play resumes from left to right the Chippewa or the Eagles and Chippewas a quick shot attempt already from the point or rather right left circle taken there by a forward defender for the Eagles that was number 16 out there Pettengill and uh yeah. and a good save there by Rofe to be able to make that save it was right into his gut but with a one goal lead he's got to stand on his head here in the final 19 minutes of play here I know 19 minutes of play here from Estero, Florida, listening live to the number six Central Michigan Chippewas and number eight Florida Gulf Coast Eagles as they're trying to answer from the pair of goals from the Chippewas as these players will play for now. It looks like a four on four for just 20 more seconds as the Anthony Sozio game major will end here. The Eagles makes a nice move inside the zone. It's Nussbaum. Another second chance opportunity. Great diving, diving defensive play, play by there by Porzondek. And a quick shot from the point taken there by Blake Hartman. That one had to be blocked with the crest of the goaltender, Rofe. And as you mentioned, a diving play by Porzondek to keep the shot attempt one-timer away from Matthew Briggs as a deflection up and out of play there. What a diving stop from two Chippewas. Yeah. Playing up the body, Reagan. And like we talked about, the game's picked up. Everything's picked up. We got players diving. We got stopped by Rofe. Man, I can tell you, this is that Southern style play we expected. Hey, Devin. <sighs> Deep breaths. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had to tell me one too, folks. He had to tell me one too. 
Oh, 19.08 left to go in this third period of play. The Eagles start on the four check. They won the faceoff draw. That was Evan McNamara, but he didn't get a shot off. It was blocked in front by Porzondik. Now here come the Chippewas the other way. Jay Nadu tags up with Isaac Gibbs. Didn't get a shot off on the high slot. Back to the point for Lasky. Sends it back down to Nadu who missed on it, and Gibbs had to chase after it. Pursued over there by Samuel Haley. He deflects this one back out to center, and the Eagles start up. It's Evan McNamara at the near side half wall. Sends this one deep, just wide of the goaltender, Rofe, and it comes all the way in front of the Central Michigan's bench. Sent back into the zone by James Rowe. It'll allow the Chippewas to reset. Charlie Hayes tags up with Alex Lasky as both teams make changes. Isaac Gibbs takes a centering feed and falls down to the ice after blowing a tire. No penalty caught on the ice as the captain for the Eagles, Jacob Toy, skates over the blue line. Back to the point for Shiro Petruska. Petruska fights off two defenders. There is a breakout chance for Owen Campbell. One on one here. Takes a shot near side of that one, trying to exploit the glove side of Styles. Goes up and out of play, a nice stop there. That was a, a blocker save there by uh, Styles. Is Joel Drucker, who's up here in the, in the broadcast booth with us, uh, do, run, running shot totals for uh, the Central Michigan coaching staff. He is one of the backup goaltenders for Central Michigan. He mentioned that that shot went blocker side. That's gotta go toward the glove side on Styles. I was just about to say, Reagan, I don't believe Owen Campbell got everything he wanted on that. He might have been trying to go glove side as a puck is set up and out of play by Jake Toy. But as you mentioned, they're trying to pick that spot. I'm sure assistant coach Dalton Sutherland, who's assessing personnel on the ice right now, yep. he leads the four check power play or pet play calling for them on the bench and he's definitely circling that ice there and you see more shot attempts from there. Certainly after killing off that uh, uh, four, the four second power play, Chippewas improved one for four on the night. They've been really good on that penalty kills and they've seemed to be able to settle it down since that Florida Gulf Coast goal early in that first. 17.53 left to go in the third period. You're listening live to Central Michigan and Florida Gulf Coast, the second, the first game of this two-game weekend series and the second of this season series of three between these two teams as the Central Michigan right now has the advantage two to one in this third period of play. As a big hits late at the near side, half wall through center ice by, from Jacob Kosnick from Jacob Toy, the captain. A very small body is Jacob Toy, this fourth year senior from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, really establishing the presence there. And it's been a physical game all night long, as you heard in the intermission report of all the penalties, <laughs> but we resume five on five play here. This puck flips all the way back to Keelan Baker in his own zone. Sauces a puck up over the way to Rideshot, but with the small boards here, flipping it up, it goes up and out of play. Yeah. No delay a game call because of the small boards here. Well, I think even if we if we were in the NHL with the boards these high, that probably would be delay of game due to that automatic penalty so system. So, Reagan. They don't have it in the ACHA we've here. We've talked about the short wall here the whole entire game as the glass is a little bit about two or three feet lower than it needs to be. A regulation is a breakout chance for you for Brian Chuck, excuse me, on the one on two with Hayden Flint. Drops into Hayden Flint, goes backhander, and that one saved near side by Stiles. Rebounded front chance against Dignity to get the shot. A try by Lasky from the point. That's and we get a stoppage of play as the net comes off of its moorings. Yeah, Hayden Flynn really couldn't get a handle on that puck as Rycheck fed it across from Hayden. Uh, Hayden just tried to settle it down, but he could really never just get that puck to get get flat on the ice. We could get a good shot of fun style. But I'll tell you what, Reagan, they were absolutely crashing the net there, and that's probably why it came yeah, off. Yeah. Styles didn't have it under his pads. He's not controlling the puck as well as he was in the first. Yeah. And it seemed to happen there as the net came off. They crashed the net near side. No goal at the faceoff from coming in front of Florida Gulf Coast bench. But I'm fired up from the forward offense <laughs> yeah. from the Chippewas. And the last half a play here, the Chippewas have certainly turned the tides of war. Turning the tides of war indeed as this puck comes back out of center. The Chippewas start once again on the forecheck. Turned over there by Blake Hartman, the leading defenseman for the Eagles. Starts out there, takes a shot near side, and Rofe easily turns that one aside. It comes back to the point there for Robert Nussbaum. Nussbaum left it there for Hartman, and it trickled back all the way to Marcos Pankey, who was waiting for it at the corner. Lost it on his stick. Keelan Baker took it over, sauced it up in the air to Hayden Flynn, and Hayden Flynn left it there in the trailer for Baker. Baker over the line on a one-on-two. Tries to deke Nussbaum, and he easily 
really blocked that one away. Nice defensive stand there, and he'll take it out to center by himself. Over the line by himself, one on four, goes wide. Isaac Gibbs dies a play, and Nadu takes it after the centering feed there, intended there for number 22, Christian McGovern. Now over the way, here comes quickly. Over the line, it's Perizzani to the net. Nadu skates in, and hard going down hard on the ice was Nadu at the near side corner. And he finally gets out of there, back to the center ice. And Nate is exchanging words with the, with, uh, the eagle who pushed him into the net. That's uh, uh, Shea Matruska, but really uh, Nate was off balance there. But going back to that play in the defensive end when the uh, Eagles had a chance, Isaac Gibbs diving into the passing lane to, to block that shot, didn't get enough, and allowed Nate to pick up that play. Chippewas have been... Very good on defense, taking away those passing lanes here tonight. Jay Nadu, the sophomore from Novi, Michigan. Shot attempt in front by Gibbs, and that one went wide as he dove to the ice. Comes back the other way for the Eagles. As I was mentioning, Nadu trying to establish a forward presence. Only has two goals this season, but one of four sophomores on this team. As Isaac Gibbs, the freshman, starts out with Porzani, takes a shot, top of the dots, left circle, and that one stopped to the crest. Didn't get everything on it. This one now, still inside the Eagles zone, flipped out of play, and Charlie Hayes pursues in his own end. Yeah, you talk about uh, Styles having trouble with rebound control. That one was right in his gut. Every goalie's got to be able to at least corral that, but he missed that one. Maybe it's just the tension of the moment, but look out. Look out. Here come the Eagles. Shot attempt near side there. Attempted by Evan McNamara, and that one was blocked away on the blocker of Rowe. They come to the slot. Backhander. Twinkles in. They score. That was Tyler Davidson taking the shot, and it bounced off a few bodies in front and goes through the five hole of Rofe. This is an even game with 15 minutes left in the third period. Yeah, Davidson let a backhander go from the slot and it was trouble from the moment it, he let that shot go because there was a bunch of bodies out in front of Rofe. It again trickled through his pads like that first goal. Davidson scored and for Rofe, he's had a couple of those this season where he's, where he's made, where he's gotten most of it but hasn't gotten all of it. I believe it hit a few bodies in front of him. We'll wait to see who gets the goal here from the scoring box, but nonetheless, it's an even game here with just 15 minutes left to go in the third period. The Eagles get one back after two unanswered goals from Isaac Gibbs and Jacob St. Andre. So Tyler Davidson, nonetheless, will get another point in this game. Davidson, the rookie from Jensen Beach, Florida, had an assist in the UNC win on January 14th, and now sits second in assists, third in team points, as well. As a quick shot attempt there by number 27, Michael Rowe just went all the way to Rowe at the top of the dots and that one easily saved for a stoppage of play there. And they will give the goal to number 13, Tyler Davidson. Assisted there on the play is number 18 there for the Eagles. That's Michael Giaramita. He gets his fifth of the season, the assistant captain from Pembroke Blind Pines, Florida. One of the two oldest players on this team with Jacob Toy at age 23. He's Look out, here's... Goal against, here come the Chippewas, two on one. Aiden Gazdecki leaves it there, shot attempt there. Or rather, that was Julian Johnson leaving it there for number 16, Keegan Moore, and just went wide on the shot attempt. That was a great pass across by and Johnson. Johnson getting in there for the hit in front of the Eagles bench. The new guy from Riverview High School establishing his presence there. Julian Johnson, his first game with the Chippewas. Talked to him a little bit in the preview show before this one. Expecting to help this team make the national tournament. And Johnson had a good chance to help that crusade there. Trying to get back up beat, back up one on the Eagles here as we're going to get new personnel for both teams out here for a stop to play. Yeah, I just noticed it now, but uh, Brennan Martin is still in that penalty box. I believe he had a four-minute double minor and a... Uh, 10 minute misconduct, which is why he's still on Absolutely. the penalty box. He's also in there with uh, Justin McComas, who is serving a 10 minute misconduct of himself. So two Rolf misconducts, almost, oh. Rich, and Rolf almost gave that one away behind the net. A couple players push away at it, and Rolf has to get in there with his stick to stop that one down. That's a Frustrated scary with that one. one. As Marcos Panky was coming in, Rolf kind of settled it lackadaisically behind his net, and he I uh, meant to leave it for a teammate, but Panky came in, pressured him, and Rolf kind of froze and 
That's that's a lucky break for Central Michigan. Marcos Panky, the rookie from St. Louis, Missouri, has 13, 13 games, two goals, four assists for six total points. Trying to get the Eagles now back up one. They're on the four check. Really tilting the ice here as they keep it inside the zone. Blake Hartman in a nice play. Got it back down low there for Christian McGovern, who sends it to the other side inside the Chippewa zone. Left it there for Marcos Panky, as we just mentioned, who couldn't handle it and had to leave it there for Nelson Bump. Turned over there, and Rychuk takes it out to center. Over there with Hayden Flynn, two on two here over the blue line. Into the Eagles zone. Goes wide. Gets roughed up at the end boards there by number six. That was Evan McNamara. And Rychak lost it on his stick, and it was left there. Taking it over was Logan Beckwith over the line alone. Deeks one defender of Hayden Flynn. It gets tripped up there by Rychak. No penalty called there as Hayden Flynn sends this one deep into the zone, and both players will change to get new personnel. Eagles reset in their own zone. Aiden Gazdecki pursuing a pair of players. That's Nussbump and Hayden. Excuse me, break Mac Blake Hartman. And now Nussbump. Left it there from Hartman. Skates over the line alone. Pursued by Isaac Gibbs. Great work Gibbs. there by Leaving Gibbs. Leaving it with the stick. Great defensive work there to send it all the way in front of the Chippewa bench and allow themselves to reset, getting the puck free. Charlie Hayes scoops it there for Jay Nadu. Nadu lost it. Trying to skate through a pair of Eagles. Left it there. There now back on the ice is Isaac Gibbs. The new score for the Chippewas. Had a goal tonight to put them up 2-1. to one. Comes back to the zone where it'll be Petruski leaving it there and sends a centering feed for Nussbaum. Nussbaum to the centering feed. Shot it down by Pettingill. He scores! Pettingill deflects one in front off the right shoulder of Matthew Briggs. It's 3-2, to two, Eagles. Pettingill, the leading scorer for Florida Gulf Coast, getting his 10th goal of the campaign. 24th point, and that's just a good, clean shot from the slot that beats Rofe glove or blocker side. Nothing he can really do about that. A great goal scored, scoring a good goal there. And two unanswered goals. The team swapping unanswered goals here. Puts Florida Gulf Coast up by one. Might have hit Matthew Briggs on the way, but nonetheless taking the shot was Skyler Pettingill. We'll wait to see off Reagan's scoring sheet officially getting the goal. And this one, Skyler Pettingill netting his 10th of the season for a team leading 24 points and he leads the team in all major categories Reagan with currently on a now an eight game point streak with that one putting this team up three to two with just 11 50 left to go so they do give the goal to Skylar Pettingill and a sit will be assist there by number 25 that's Robert Nussbaum as well as who do you have, Reagan? Number 14, Samuel Haley getting the assist there. So Skylar Pettingill, I thought it might have hit a shoulder off of Matthew Briggs in front, but he goes to the low slot area, rips it, blocker side on Rofe, makes it a three to two game. They lead in shot totals, they lead in the game now. Yeah, it's been good fight by the Eagles here. And this contest, despite how it started, has been a very close game here at Hertz Arena. High stick waved off across the way. High stick waved off, and it comes back to the Chippewa zone. Resetting there is Christopher Martin. Left it up to center ice for Simon Sellians. Getting over St. Andre. Leaves it there for a shot attempt on Owen Campbell. Trying to go glove side at the right circle, and that one's easily stopped by Stiles with the crest of the Eagle. I really wouldn't say easy on that one. He had to come over and make a great save on Owen Campbell there. And Campbell almost snuck that past him. Stiles didn't know where it was for a second. And it wound up in his pads. So far tonight, Styles has faced oh, 31 shots. Out. If we got a Chippewa down on the ice, holding his face Saint mask, Andre. that's Jacob St. Andre getting up gingerly, but it looks like he might have taken a high stick there from the defender. That was number 24, Jared Cyrils. And it looks like Cyrils could go to the box here, he will. Yeah. It's gonna be a high sticking call here and it's gonna send the Chippewas to their sixth power play of the night, Reagan. Uh, fifth. Fifth power play yeah. of the night coming up here to the Chippewas. St. Andre took a high stick in the face mask there. Okay on the play, but it sends the Chippewas to their fifth power play. Jared Searles goes to his first box of the night. 11.15 to go, a huge power play coming up for the Chippewas. So far tonight, one for five on the, or one for four on the power play, excuse me, after the goal by Isaac Gibbs. On, on the campaign, Chippewas are uh, 12 for 63. They're 0 for four tonight. 
Actually, the RL for night. Thanks for correcting me, Reagan. I thought there might have been a power play goal by Isaac Gibbs, but it was after the minor lead penalty assessed to the Oigle in the second period. So, but nonetheless, the Chippewa start on the power play in his own zone. Here comes Simon Southern line. Turn the puck over quickly there and shorthanded to Tyler Davidson. Davidson goes back in, had a goal earlier tonight and trying to get another one there as he pushes the net off its mooring and the referee corrects that one and gets it back. Jacob St. Andre tried to take a pair of <laughs> eagles there through the middle. He tried to get a bit too fancy there. To, yeah, tried to get too fancy with it and fell down. And it comes back all the way cleared here. 118 left to go in the Chippewas power play. They need this one to get back even in this game. Florida Gulf Coast Eagles lead 3-2. to two. You're listening live from the Hertz Arena. Devin Serra joined alongside Reagan Cleaves for the second of this three-game season series and the first of this two-game weekend series between these teams, the number six-ranked Chippewas and the number eight-ranked Eagles. And uh, now for, for no safe for wear, no heart for love contest between these two teams. That's 50 seconds left in the Chippewas power play. Puck sent back into their own bench by Nussbaum, and it will cause a face-off to come back to the face-off circle in front of the Eagles bench. Yeah, Chippewas just haven't been able to get much past the blue line offensively here. It's been a lot of dump and chase, but the, credit to the Eagles where credit is due. They've been, they've had a really tight blue line uh, here on not only this penalty kill, but also the entire night. Now a bouncing puck in on row. If he gloves that calmly and leaves it there for Brennan Martin. Bradley Gorton sent a puck with wings all the way to Rofe, and he gloved that one down and settled it for Christopher Martin. Martin made one nice take, gets up the line with Gibbs. Gibbs to the right circle, goes back to Christopher Martin, and he couldn't get the one-timer off, just missed on the blade. Comes back to the point for Nadu. Nadu left it there for Martin, wants to shoot. Goes back to the center ice, shoots there, Gibbs! And that one just wide of the goaltender off the... Up and out of play. That was net came off. For Zonic. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. net came off, but it, it was close. That net's come off a couple of times now, Reagan. Yeah. The referees. I wonder what the the sleeves for the net, yeah. the, the net post. It's your typical. Like it's your typical net post. If you're looking for game reports, stats, schedules, and more, take a trip to SeamishIceHockey.com. There you can find those and much more, including player information, recruiting information, apparel, and more. That's C-M-I-C-H-H-O-C-K-E-Y.com. 15 left in this power play for the Chippewas. Quick shot from the left circle by Nadeau as he's falling to the ice. Comes back to Porzonic in the corner. Back to the point for Martin. Martin there took a shot, and that one deflected up and high as the puck got wings off the back of Bradley Gordon. And this we're going to stop it to play with four seconds left on the power play. Man advantage. This will send the puck. And barring a miracle, the Chippewas will go 0 for 6 on the power play, 0 for 5 on the power play tonight and coming out of the box will be Jared Searles. Yeah, but the Chippewas draw, have scored in Chippewas have scored in less time from Gazdecki's goal back then, but that one this won't is happen now. Out. It's sent all the way down there. Face off won by Skylar Pettingill, and it's left there for Christopher Martin. Skylar Pettingill had a goal to put the put the Eagles up three to two in this game. And a breakdown chance here. Here's Ordo Prasadic over the line. Goes back in on Styles and he makes the stick save. Wraparound chance in front for Gibbs. And that one said no by the goaltender as a diving Blake Hartman came in there to knock his wraparound chance away. There's going to be a penalty here on the Eagles as Porzondik was in on that breakaway. He wants a penalty shot. I think it probably could be a penalty shot, but it's yeah, going to it be Nussbaum. Correct. It's going to be Nussbaum to the box here to put the Chippewas on yet another power play. They are 0 for 5, 12 for 64 on the campaign. We'll wait for the official scoring table tally of it, but it looks like it was a tripping penalty called to Robert Nussbaum. It was a hook. Hook, you saw it, Reagan, as a hooking call coming up here. The Chippewas on their fifth power, sixth power play of the night coming up here. Back-to-back -back chances here, and they go right back to it. They win the draw off the line, but it's quickly set out of the zone after Matthew Briggs get in to take it out. Rofe leaves it there for Brennan Martin. Getting in there was Briggs to break that one up. Pettingill pursues St. Andre out of the zone. The Chippewas up the wing. The far wing is Joey Simon Selly. Simon Selly goes around one player, goes back in front for Martin who tried a one-timer that one just fanned on. Rather that was taken at Owen Campbell and now it comes back to Martin at the near side calf wall. In the zone, in the low slot, Campbell took a shot and that one deflected wide by Styles with the stick. Chippewas with 33 shots, looking for more here. Simon Selly back to the point for Hayes. Hayes takes a shot off the blocker of Styles just wide to the near corner. Back down low for Simon Selly. They play tag with Campbell. Another tag here, Simon Selly to the net. Blocker side, trying to go on Styles, and he blocked that one with his right pad of the shin. 
Still inside the zone, the Chippewas had a great power play so far. Three shots on net in the last half minute or so gone. One minute left in this power play, 7.56 to go in the game. The Chippewas trying to get even after the Skyler Pennington will go to put the Eagles up 3-2. to two. Chaley Hayes at the right circle, takes a shot. That one went wide up and over the goal. Owen Campbell pursues it, takes a golf whack at the defender in Pettingill, and he'll get it out, and the Eagles get fresh bodies out. Jane Indu comes quickly over the line, leaving person out. Campbell has some open eyes, takes a slapper, and that one wide of Styles is a crashing. Jane Nadu falls into the Tendi Styles, and we'll get a stoppage of play here once again for the net coming off its moorings for the third time in the last three minutes. Yeah. What an attempt there by the chip loss the power play. Yeah, great job by Jay Nadu on that entry into the zone. He made the pass up to Campbell on the left wing. Campbell held it at the left point, and Jay Nadu went straight to the net. And he was looking for a rebound. He didn't end up getting one and ended up tripping and falling into the net minder, but... Still a great job by Jay Nadu showing Hustle to get to that front, to get to the front of that net. Oh my goodness, Christopher Martin absolutely undressed Jacob Toy in his own end. Nadu just Chippewa got knocked down from here. behind. Nadu gets knocked down from behind, sends it over the way to Porzondik, and it comes back to Nadu who skates into the Eagles zone. Just 14 seconds to go in the sixth power play of the night for the Chippewas, and it's going to end to no avail as the Eagles get it out of their own zone and get fresh bodies on the ice. Chippewas 0 for 6 now on the power play tonight. Don't answer with seven minutes left to go in this game. Isaac gives up the wing now. Skates wide of the defender. That was Jared Searles coming out of the box. Now. Back to even strength here as the Eagles start out in their own zone. Blake Hartman sends a long stretch pass there up the way from McNamara. McNamara takes a shot on the near side corner. Rolf didn't have it for a sec, but he finally gloved it down after skating in was Pettingill to pursue him. Yeah, good save there by Rolf to corral that. Rebound on that shot from the left circle by McNamara. Reagan, the Eagles now for the sixth time this season and just 14 games, eclipse 50 goals. You and I talked about it in the pregame show before this, how strong the Eagles were on getting shots on net. And Ropes had to save 49 of 52, certainly helping his save percentage, but he wants to see his team answer one. McComas is back out there after, after serving that misconduct. Eagles on the four check. Behind the net, pursued there. McNamara by Christopher Martin. Trying to send one in, find him a combat, send it out of the zone. And not knowing where he was on the ice, Matruska tried to send it over the blue line, blue line to blue line for Rowe, and just didn't have it over the blue line. They had to get it back out to center. Now Matruska goes D to D. And rather sends it through center over to Tyler Davidson, fan on the pass, and Charlie Hayes corrals it by his own net. Keelan Baker trying to block off the defender there, skating in on the angle, and it comes all the way back to Bangle. Baker once again. Both teams reset. McComas tries to say against Pettering feed it once again. A couple of redirections and a couple of send-ins by the Eagles as the Chippewas cannot get any sort of offense going just yet. 5.50 left to go in the third period. You're listening live to the second of three games in the season series between the Central Michigan Chippewas and Florida Gulf Coast Eagles. And a big one here as the Eagles look to even the season series at one after the Chippewas won 3-1 to one over them on home ice on October 16th. Starting out in his own end is Owen Campbell. Owen Campbell of line with McComas. McComas missed on the pass there after it was deflected up by Blake Hartman on the bouncing puck. This one gets wings left there, dropped the trailer there for Martin, and he sent it back to his brother, Christopher Martin, who share out there on the ice with Owen Campbell. Now Martin, Marty and Marty talking there. <laughs> and behind their own net, Christopher Martin sends it to Marty. Marty over the center ice. Over to Campbell. No one intended the pass there. He skates in on the defender, Brady Walsh. Sends him to the end boards hard, and that one taken over by Hartman of the Eagles. Sends it up the wing there on a two-on-one. Here's Skyler Pettingill starting up with Sam Haley. Haley takes a shot, Pettingill, and Rose says no at the top of the dots. Near side where he scored earlier, and that one will get a stoppage of play. Yeah, and that chance was generated not only by uh, the Eagles, but also the fact that Owen Campbell and uh, Jacob St. Andre collided with each other at the top of the slot in the Eagles end, and that led uh, to, uh, to an odd man rush the other way for the Eagles. Thomas Rove standing tall wouldn't let the Eagles get, uh, get that goal. Taking the face off here in the Chippewa zone. Far side circle will be Matthew Briggs up against Joey Simon Selly. Simon Selly, one of the best face off men in all of ACHA right now, has a 67% face off win percentage according to our stat metrics at stevenchicehockey.com. 
he looked to win another one. Simon Selly does, and it starts out with Owen Campbell. Jacob St. Andre, rather, with Owen Campbell. And he skates over the blue line at the near side half wall. Hartman pursues over there, and St. Andre and Campbell tag up to help each other. Behind the net, Owen Campbell pursued there by the defender, Briggs. Leaves it there in the near side corner. It's stuck there over with Joey Simon Selly, but Hartman took it over, and waiting with it, he'll send it out of the zone, up the far side wing there for Pettingill. Pettingill and Lasky fight with it. And Pettingill chips this one. Golf swing towards the Chippewa zone and he'll come off the ice. New personnel there. 440 golf calls. A long stretch pass there intended. The Chippewas. That's the third time I've counted they've tried that, Reagan, on the stretch pass, and it hasn't worked yet. It allows here. Come the Eagles the other way. A slendering feed for intended there for Tyler Davidson from Nussbaum missed on his stick and it came back out to center. The Eagles starting off the forecheck again at the right circle, Nussbaum looking to go through center, deflected in front from Nadu and after a skate of Nadu, Rofe had to make the diving stop to get that one settled down and with 3.53 to go, the ice sort of tilted here in the Eagles' favor. Yeah, ever since their first goal, from, or their second goal, Davidson at five minutes of this third period, uh, it's ice certainly has tilted in their favor. Rope making a good save to corral that rebound. He uh, didn't take it into his pad and it bounced off a little bit, but he was able to get that uh, mitt down on it and hold on to it. Face off won by Davidson of the Eagles, but it was turned over in the end by the Chippewa. Brendan Martin, eight to number eight. James Rowe takes a big hit in his own zone, and that one will definitely get the bench Great fired up. They're there standing up Andrew now. Porzondin. Both benches standing up here as the Eagles start out. Number 18 getting in with Jaramina. Trying to take the shot and that one deflected off the shoulder in front by Martin. Brendan Martin. And Isaac Gibbs trying to send it out of the zone. Turned over there and sent deep back by Bradley Gordon. Gordon there left it for Keelan Baker with 3.17 left to go. The Chippewas need to get some offense going here. Has a breakout chance for Isaac Gibbs. Gibbs on a one-on-one. -on -one. Shoots. He scores! Isaac Gibbs ties the game up. His second of the night with 3.08 left to go in the third. And that was a great seeing eye pass from the defensive blue line. I didn't catch the number, but an uh, Eagle player fell down right at about that air side dot. And a great pass to Isaac Gibbs up left wing. He deked to the left and outweighted. Uh, he <laughs> outweighted. Uh, Styles, yeah, <laughs> Styles, you know, to the right and buried it into the back of the net. That is Isaac Gibbs' 11th of the season team leading. And you know what, Reagan? He is known for that backhander. He went forehand, backhand, absolutely roofed it on Styles to even this game up at three. And the Eagles look to answer over the wing. Here comes number 19, Bradley Gordon. Tying up with there with Jacob Toya, the captain. A quick shot attempt from the point there by number 24. That's Jared Ciro's out there. Chippewa's playing what looks like a little bit of a man-to-man -man defense right now. Good steal there by Simon Selle, but he couldn't corral it fully. Back to the point there. Back down low for Ciro's. Ciro's comes back off the ice. Jacob Toy looks hurt on the stick, and it allows the Chippewa's to reset and chip it out of the zone. 2.30 left to go. You're listening live from Estero, Florida as the number six Chippewas take on the number eight Eagles and a trio of goals here from both teams even at three. 2.20 left to go. Shot totals 55-37 in favor of the Eagles and they're trying to answer so far. Alex Lasky in his own turn trying to chip it out. Skylar Pettingo trying to deke a few players and Andrew Porzondik left it there. Back to the point there for Samuel Haley. Haley and Nussbaum couldn't keep it inside the zone and they had to reset to center ice. Just in front of us at the near side, half center ice, is Jay Nadu taking it there with Lasky. Turn it over, and Pettigo takes it in the Chippewa zone. Deeks one player, shoots near side on the tendy rope, and it just went wide. And back to the far side half wall. Gibbs and Haley tie up. Gibbs chips this one out of the zone and comes off the bench, or comes back to the bench for fresh bodies. The Eagles, 137 left to go in this game. Nussbaum over the near side corner. Skates in with Rychuk pursuing. Sends a featuring pass with nobody home. And now Aiden Gazdecki chases in to face him. Inside the Chippewa zone, behind the net. Tyler Davidson has it. Had the first goal in this game and tried to center it through and nobody was there. <laughs> Jacob Kosnick spun around by a pair of players there and he'll come off the ice. Back towards number 13. That's Tyler Davidson taking it once again for the Eagles. Dropped the trailer there and left it there for Hartman who sent it deep towards the Chippewa zone. Hayes sent it. And with a saucering pass to Hayes, or rather Rychuk. Rychuk over the line, lost it on his stick, and this one's got wings all the way back to the Chippewa zone. One minute left to go in this third period. We're even at three. 
The Chippewas bad turnover there by B Keelan Baker inside his own zone. Pursued there by Giarmina. Giarmina couldn't handle that one. They came back to Jacob Kosnick. A really Kosnick good over the right circle. A really good job there to recover by Keith by uh, Baker. Uh, after he lost, after he found on that pass, he was able to uh, knock the puck away from the man. Now here's Nussbaum. Nussbaum over the far side wing. Skates in over there and defended well by Hayden Flick. Hayden left the body there for a for Nussbaum, and that one flipped all the way back towards his own dead by Christopher Martin behind the net. Gets this one out to center. McComas tried to get it on his stick, and James Rowe was in there to use the body. Getting over there to the weird side in front of the Chippewa bench, Michael Rowe. 12 seconds left to go. We'll get a stoppage of play here for a presumptuous offside. And with 12 seconds left to go, the faceoff will come back in front of the Chippewa bench. Yeah, Chippewa has put their arms up immediately because the linesman missed it who was standing on the line, but the referee who was standing in the corner blew it dead, and so offsides it was, and now the Chippewas are gonna call a timeout here. Time on the ice, Devin, we'll take one as well. You're listening to CMU Club Hockey on CCHN. Back with you live inside the Hertz Arena as we're with 12 seconds left to go in the third period. Looking maybe at overtime here in front of the half wall of the Chippewa bench. The faceoff will come. Isaac Gibbs just tied the game up with three minutes to go on a breakaway chance. Going forehand, backhand, roofing it on the goaltender Styles to even the game at one for his team leading 11th goal on the season and team leading 19 points with three seconds left. The Eagles will chip it out of their own end. And for the first time this season, the Chippewas will go to overtime. And this one, or rather, not exactly overtime, but the first one in Florida. Yes, this yes, certainly. For, I was looking for. And yeah, this we've one, had two ties the, thus far this year. The Florida year. Gulf Coast Eagles will have to reassess at their own benches with a 3-3 tie here at the end of regulation. Reagan shot totals in favor of Florida Gulf Coast. 57-37, and what a third period from both sides. The Eagles went out 3-2 after two unanswered goals from both sides, but answering here is Isaac Gibbs for his team leading 11th goal, but how about the Chippewas responding there late, not giving up? Not only that, but you mentioned those shot totals. Almost 60 shots on goal, and Thomas Rofe has stood on his head here tonight. He's made so many key saves and it, it's been absolutely ridiculous that the, the, the Thomas Rofe, who's played six seasons in the ACHJ, I bet that you cannot find a game in which he's made 54 saves in his career. So we get set for overtime here from Estero, Florida. This is the third overtime the Chippewas have played this season. They previously, as I was wrongly corrected there by Reagan, thank you very much, off of two ties coming against Calvin University and Saginaw Valley State University. And the Chippewas, known for this extra time at least, have not gotten a win or a loss total in the scoring column. They'll all assess at the bench for this, what will be a three on three overtime coming up here from Estero, Florida. We'll give you a recap of this third period here. So far, goals scored in the third period by Tyler Davidson and Skylar Pettigill of the Eagles for their team leading first and second in total goals this season. But answering late in the period with just 3.21 left to go is Isaac Gibbs unassisted unofficially. But what a job by the chip ones I've mentioned to answer here late. And we're going to... Four on four overtime here. Yep, out there for the Chippewas, it'll be Christopher Martin out there with Joey Simon Selly, Jacob St. Andre, and Keelan Baker. For the Eagles, it'll be number 12, Matthew Briggs out there on the wings with Skylar Pettigill and Blake Hartman. At the point, it'll be Robert Nussbaum out there for the Eagles and what will be their overtime here, the first at home this season. And we'll get set for overtime here. 
for a puck drop. We're underway. Oh, look out. Chippewas won the draw quickly. It was getting over the line was Matthew Briggs. Lost it on a stick prematurely and left it back. Dropping the trailer there was Nussbaum for Hartman. Hartman over the line. The leading defenseman in goals and points this season for the Eagles. Goes wide. Skates back to the point. Trying to leave for Penningill. And Joey Simon Silly took it away on the stick. Skates in the near side corner. Here he comes with the right circle. One on three here. Waiting for help. Trying to send it back on the backhand. And lost it. Fanned on it. Back to Hartman, he gets it back. So this lost off for St. Andre, trying a one-timer and just didn't get anything on it to get the shot into the back of the net. And here come the U.S. quickly over the line. Over the way is Matthew Briggs going to the net and that one just wide with the stick of Rofe. Great stick work there by Rofe to poke that puck away. Now look out, Nussbaum left point. Look out, Nussbaum back to the high slot there. Left it there for Sales. Now he gets it back. Listen there for Briggs on a quick shot. And Wolf, oh my goodness, thought he had it for a second, was unsure. And it will trickle to the five hole. That one could have squeaked through. Oh, Reagan. Lipton, he made that save, but instead of corralling it, it dropped in between his pads in the butterfly there. And with 55 seconds gone, we've already had some pretty eventful things happen here in overtime. Reagan, Rolf has had trouble with that five hole all game. There's already been two that have been scored through that way. And here come the Eagles once again as a shot attempt by Tyler Davidson just wide. It comes back to the near side corner. Here's Mevin McNamara. Back to the point there for James Rowe. Tags up D to D there with Shea Matruska playing both ways. Back to the point for Rowe. Rowe waits with it. Blocked in front by Nadu. Back to McNamara. McNamara skates wide. Has nowhere to go with it yet. Back to Matruski. Diving play by Campbell. Didn't get a shot off. Nice job by him to get that one through. And Porzonic has to come in to help. And Rofe gloves this one down with the stick with 335 left in this overtime. Now that's a great chance for Florida Gulf Coast there on the right wing circle with the pass across. But Porzonic diving over doesn't allow them. The, the, the Eagle standing there to get a shot off, and instead he loses the puck. Now he's Charlie Hayes off the draw. Off the draw, Charlie Hayes over the blue line, one on three here. Shot at the top of the dots on the weak side of Styles, where two goals have been scored tonight, but he gets that one with the crest. It looks it looked like Hayes kind of misfired on that. He looked to be aiming toward the top right corner, where where uh, two of the Chippewas goals have been scored, but he misfired on it and it went a little bit into the left shoulder of style. Charlie Hayes looking for his third goal of the season has been solid on the blue line all season for the Chips. Looking to answer there and this one face off one in the Florida Gulf Coast zone will be Robert Nussbaum resetting there. They'll start out on the wings and pinching through was Hartman. Left it there but turn it over quickly as here comes Jacob Kosnick trying to skate over, but he's called for an offside there nice. as it was turned over from Hartman at the near side blue line. Campbell didn't get over the line in time as Kosnick was coming in. Campbell was still in the zone after he was caught up on the boards and yeah, that's a missed opportunity there for the Chippewas as Kostnick had some speed over the line. Lasky won the draw from Owen Campbell and sent it deep to the zone and allows both teams to reset. 2.56 left to go in this overtime period. Over the wing there for the Eagles is sent deep by Hartman and skating in there deep is G.R. Amita to retrieve it. At the near side corner there, tries to get it back to the blue line or rather keeps it for himself. Now back to the blue line for Nussbaum. Pursued there by Owen Campbell. Nice stick poke check there by Campbell. And he tries to beat Nussbaum to the race. And he's going to have a one-on-one -on -one almost there. It comes to the corner and he waits with it. Nussbaum shows him to the corner as they fight one-on-one. -on -one. Nussbaum won that one. Battle after losing it the first time and it trickles all the way back after a couple of whacks by both players to Christopher Martin. Over the line, back to Barra. Great, Great defense work. by here. Owen Campbell using the poke check but lost his stick with it now. Picks it back up and this puck gets wings all the way back out the center. Campbell's what a defensive stand by Campbell. The bench. As you mentioned, Reagan, he's gas coming off the bench. And he'll be replaced out there with Joey Simon Selly. Lasky now. Here come the Eagles the other way. Skyler Pennington with a shot in that one. Gloved by the goaltender Rowe for the stop as the fans behind us cheer. Yeah, Thomas Rofe, we've talked about him being a little shaky with that 5-0. His glove hand has been absolutely stellar here tonight. He's made countless numbers of saves with that left hand, and there, there's another good example of that one. It's not many times that you see Thomas Rofe beat far side. They didn't allow one there. As the Eagles now 60 shots, the slapper from the high slot by Matthew Briggs. And he has to catch that one with a check protector for his 58th season of the night. Or 58th yeah. save of the night, Reagan. And that was a great save there by Rowe. 158 left to go in this overtime period. Briggs tried another shot after winning the draw by himself. And Joey Simoncelli pursued at the near far side half wall there by Briggs. 
And now Simon Selly settles it down for St. Andre. St. Andre leaves it on the wing. Here comes Joey Simon Selly. He's going to look for help with Brendan Martin. Skates over to the corner. Leaves one for Martin, who couldn't get the one timer off to the high slot. Sent back deep by Jacob St. Andre. 134 left to go. Inside the Eagles zone, the Chippewas looking to get this one here before it comes to the 130 mark in overtime. Here come the Eagles on the way. Won the scrum and row over the line. Leaves it to the wing for Penningill. The leading scorer for the Eagles. Had one earlier in this game. Put them up 3-2. to two. Drops it for Rowe. Rowe sends this one to the backhand deep and Baker chases it after it. Pursued by Matruska. Sends it to the other way. D to D there for Jacob St. Andre after he's roughed up by Tyler Davidson at the boards. And this one trying to be settled down by Hartman at the point. Doesn't work out. Matruska tries to slam this one. Golf slapper deep. But Jay Nadu was in the poke check. And here, a nice poke check by St. Andre. He's got a one-on-one -on -one of Matruska. Lost it on his stick as he tried to go backhand forehand. And there's no shot attempt to fail. 48 seconds to go in the overtime period. Christopher Martin to the other end takes it over. Pursued by Hartman. He takes it over there. Turned over by Davidson. To the net near side. And Rose says no, they whack away at it. Martin's in there to stop it down, and we get a whistle. What a great save by Thomas. Drove to be able to locate that puck at the side of the net, and not only that, but also make the save, and then find the puck and cover it up. He has been fantastic all night for him. That is That should be his 59th save of the, save of the night. He has played absolutely wonderfully here tonight, and I know we've uh, sang his praises a bunch here, but they're rightfully deserved. How about Skylar Pettingu on the other side to pump his tires a bit? What an effort from him. Saving right now 35 on 38, but it's all about the Chippewas and Rolf right now. It's another shot attempt in front there by Briggs, and that one deflected away by Joey Simoncelli. It's the backhand, Hartman, and Rolf says no with the glove after a couple of quick chances there from the Eagles. Rolf seemed to maybe be caught off by that shot a little bit. He ended up catching it, kind of going down with it, uh, but... He's lucky he made that save. 30 seconds left in Joey overtime. Joey Simon Selly won the draw to relieve some pressure, but it was immediately knocked down by Nussbaum at the blue line. Takes a shot, is blocked in front by Charlie Hayes, and taking no chances with it is Rolf to stop the play. Michael but beat Giarmita. up there is number 18, Michael Giarmita, the assistant captain he there. He took the for shot, the I believe, into the mid, or actually on the back of the right knee as he comes off here. There'll be a draw to the right after Rolf covered that one. Giarmita had an assist earlier tonight, the assistant captain from Pembroke Pines. Florida goes off the ice gingerly with 14 seconds left to go in the game. Here over the line is Hartman. The Eagles get one more shot at winning this one. Here's Hartman going wide. Pursued by Martin. Comes the row for the near side corner. Tried to glove it down but didn't get it. You've got three seconds left. Nussbaum at the near side corner. Tries to take one more shot. And the whistle is going to sound after the wraparound attempt there by Toy. And that one will end the overtime period. But stick with us as it looks like we could be going to a shootout here, Reagan. Yeah, they. This will if, if it is, this will be two straight games in a shootout for these Gulf Coast Eagles, and it will be a shootout here as we will reset the clock or we reset the scoreboard here. So for any viewers that are confused at home, we mentioned that Central Michigan has gone to two overtimes earlier this season, and yeah. both of them ended in times. But per ruling of ACJ with this reffing crew with five minute overtimes, you're allowed to go to shootouts yeah. inside that time frame now. Yeah. It's a little bit different with it for your officiating crew, right, Ray? It's, but it's more the fact that within the MCHC, they don't right. do it's shootouts. The conference. You're right. And Florida Gulf Coast, they're an independent team, so they do full shootouts and this will be something a little bit different here. So the contestants As, But right now, Simon Selly and Hayes are talking with the referees about whether or not they're doing a shootout, and the referee's going to go talk with the, with the, the last, coaches either, at Florida Gulf Either way, Coast. this ends, Ray, and the Chippewas will get a point out of this game yeah. no matter what happens through here. We've seen that with Calvin and Saginaw State. Second of Valley State, but you're right. As the referees gather at center ice to talk over a little bit of the the, the rubric here for scoring, all the fans here assessing a shootout, and it looks like the referees goaltenders are going to switch here. Are going to switch sides here. Yeah, Styles isn't right. happy about it. Gives his head a shake as he will meet Rofe at center ice, and and they're going to switch sides and talk about it as they tap. It looks here. like the, the the referee at center ice signaled the Rofe as he went by the number three. So I believe it's going to be a, th a three-round shootout here. So three rounds coming up here. The first attempter for the Eagles will be number 12, Matthew Briggs. 
The forward rookie from Clayton, New York, is second on the team in goals, assists, and points. Only behind Pettingill has points in 10 of his last 11. And will look to get the Eagles up one in the shootout. So we'll wait for the referee's signal. They'll gather two of the linesmen behind Thomas Rofe and his side of the net. They'll talk to him for a bit, waiting for Briggs. Both teams will gather on the benches to assess this. And here we go, Matthew Briggs. Will go wide with it over the blue line to the left circle. Skates in through center, takes the shot, he scores! Matthew Briggs goes blocker side on Thomas Rofe, and they're up 1-0 in the shootout. Yeah, Thomas Rofe beating on that blocker side. It's a great shot there by Matthew Briggs here in the shootout. Granted, uh, the Eagles have a little bit more experience. That was Thomas Rofe's first shootout uh, faced this season. Now here's... Isaac Gibbs. Isaac Gibbs has two goals tonight, 11 goals in the season. Goes wide with it to the right circle. To the forehand, and Styles says no with the blocker side. This one stays 1 0 in favor of Florida Gulf Coast. Looks like tried to skate wide there, Reagan. Go to the forehand. Yeah. No fancy moves from Isaac Gibbs as he just sent that one close to the check protector like of here's Styles. Pettengill. And Skyler Pentagon now the leading scorer for the Florida Gulf Coast Eagles, will be out here for the shootout. Has 10 goals on the season, and he'll go wide. Towards center ice, fakes with a shot, and off the post, it goes near side. That one's gonna be thankful for Rolf on the post. Yeah, the leading scorer for the Eagles, tried to go far side again, tried to beat Rolf the same way he was beaten, and now Jacob St. Andre has a chance to extend the shootout for the Chippewas here. St. Andre had a goal earlier tonight to put the chips Back within one goes. earlier, and here he comes over the blue line. We'll go wide to the right circle. Backhand, forehand, back to the backhand. Roos in, and Styles says no on the near side. Great with the save. Glove. Great save there by Styles. And now Nosbaum has a chance to win it here for the Eagles. If he scores, he wins it. If Rofe makes the save, we get another Chippewa shooter. Robert Nussbaum, the forward and defenseman from Boca Raton, Florida. Well, look to end it. Rolf needs to make the save to extend the shootout. Nussbaum will come wide this time to the right circle. Forehand, backhand, here goes the forehand. He shoots, he scores. Florida Gulf Coast wins it in a shootout tonight with the final score coming four to three in favor of these Eagles. Thomas Rolf saved 60 on 63 tonight. Tyler Skiles 35 on 38. But it wasn't enough as the Eagles will win their second straight game in the shootout and their third straight so far of this season. And they'll even the season series at one apiece, technically, on the score sheet. As both teams will gather at center ice, we'll step aside, stay with us. You'll be listening in to the postgame show presented by SteamHiceHockey.com here from Hertz Arena in Estero, Florida. The final score right now in the shootout, Florida Gulf Coast 4, Central Michigan 3.
Back with you live here inside the Hertz Arena in Estero, Florida after the final score, 4-3 to three in favor of the Eagles in the shootout victory. It was the Chippewas coming back late in the third period after two unanswered goals from the Eagles to even the game at three off the stick of Isaac Gibbs, but it's not enough to win in the shootout unofficially. They will get a point out of this game from this effort, but man, what a game we saw here tonight, Reagan. Yeah. We saw a little bit of everything from the shot totals, from the excellent saves, the goaltending, the hits, the fights. We had everything on the table here. Yeah, when I sit down to write the game story tonight, I'm going to think of two things. I'm going to think of the shootout and the way that Chippewas came back twice from facing deficits. They were down one nothing by 7.09 and at the end of the first, and then they scored two unanswered goals to lead 2-1 at the end of two. Then it was Florida Gulf Coast with Davidson and Pettengill getting two goals in the first uh, eight minutes of the third period before Gibbs tied it up, so that's twice that Central Michigan came back. But my headliner is going to be the fact that Thomas Rove made 60 saves in a hockey game. That is absolutely ridiculous, and as a goaltender, I don't, I, I, I'm giving him the puck, and I'm keeping it until, I'm keeping it to my grave, because this was an <laughs> incredible performance tonight hey, by hey, 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 the senior Thomas Rove. Breathe in, breathe out. <laughs> I think we're all taking a deep breath after oh, this certainly. one, folks. Official shot totals in favor of us. Florida Gulf Coast, 63-38. And how about Skyler Pettingill saved 35 on 38 tonight? Right. And we'll talk a little bit about him tomorrow Nick as well Nick as styles. we get into the game break for tomorrow. We'll talk about him in the preview show. But right now we'll get to our three keys to get. Rather, our players to watch a recap here. Jacob St. Andre had a goal tonight, officially putting his point total at 13 on the season. Brendan Martin also looks like got on the score sheet or lack thereof, but establishing his presence with yeah. that game misconduct, but just being physical misconduct. present. And yeah. what an effort from him tonight. Not officially, not getting my light the lamp, but <laughs> um, we'll get to that one in yeah. a moment as well. Florida Golf Coast, Skyler Pettingo netting a goal tonight, putting his point total at one for this game. And Blake Hartman, our game player to watch, played really good defensively all yeah. the night. Was pretty much everywhere. Played both ways as a defenseman forward. And for our keys to the game that we talked about, Reagan, you know, they didn't really get off to the best start, the hottest start we would have thought. Certainly not. But they came back in the second and third periods and really made it close. Yeah, Chippewas uh, did, started dismally to this game, to be frank. They were outshot 24-7 to through the first... Uh, through the first 13:39 of that hockey game, but once they, once uh, McGovern was uh, sent off for a trip at that 13:39 mark, uh, the Chippewas kind of turned things around. They didn't get a penalty, they didn't get a goal on that power play, but they got seven, they got seven shots on goal before Florida Gulf Coast notched their next shot, and that's where things kind of turned for the Chippewas, and they were able to recover from that extremely slow start. Now we take a look at the. Uh, at, at our light, the lamp. I had Jacob St. Andre. He had one goal on the night. Again, not sure about assist. It was hard to hear the PA in here, so we'll uh, we'll look at it later tonight. We'll get you an official score sheet on the ACHA website later tonight. Uh, Devin Sarah's pick for uh, Brendan Martin, as you mentioned, didn't do much. It didn't impact the scoreboard, but he was he did play well. He he certainly uh, impacted the penalty sheet. And then uh, uh, Tristan Hagenstein's pick uh, the. The first for, for his first game in a Chippewa uniform, Julian Johnson was involved in a couple of uh, good plays. He had the two-on-one in that third period, and also it was it was caught up in a scrum uh, behind the Eagles' net. And then uh, the winner, at least for right now, uh, is uh, Joe Grogan. He got uh, he had Isaac Gibbs, who got two goals tonight here at Hertz Arena. Thanks for that, Reagan, and we'll wrap up here with our three stars of the game presented by CMHIceHockey.com. The first star of the game going to none other than Skylar Pettingill had the go-ahead goal early in the third period, getting the Eagles up in this game 3-2. to two. That puts his goal total to a team-leading 10 and his point total to a team-leading 24 on the season. Was absolutely everywhere on the ice tonight. The Chippewas did a great job defending him, at least from getting a lot of shot attempts in the low slot area where he really likes to go and thrive. 
that they deflected away tonight. But our second star of the game goes none other than that saver of those goals, Thomas Rove, saving 60 on 63 shots tonight. An absolutely astounding effort from the senior goaltender from Ghost Isle, Michigan. And we talked about in the pregame show, Thomas Rove leading the league in Division Three among goalies with at least 10 starts with a .944 save percentage. I think it's safe to say he just added to that total, increasing his lead in the, <laughs> the stat column. But nonetheless, would have liked to see a win out of his team. Maybe it would tell you as one of the nicest guys in this team, he could have done more for the win. But nonetheless, Thomas Rolf gets our second star of the game. And finally, for the third star of the game, it'll be Isaac Gibbs. As Reagan just showed me real quick, as a point, he now has a .952 save percentage. Right. Even better. Yeah, that, that .95 is tonight. That's just an incredible stat Absolutely. line. Thomas Rofe. We'll get nine, real nine, quick five, to now our third percentage. star of the game. Isaac Gibbs scored two goals tonight, getting the game-tying goal here late for the Chippewas. Absolutely roofing a backhander on him, and it was a beautiful goal. That puts his goal total to a team-leading 11, and his point total to a league Team leading 19 on the season. An excellent night from him. The Chippewas unofficially go 0 for 6 on the power play tonight. They had a couple of good chances later on in the game, as we mentioned, but to no avail. That'll put their power play total now to 12 for 65 on the season. The penalty kill allowing only one goal tonight on the penalty kill. That'll put their total at 10 for 62 on the season. 52, excuse me, on that one as that'll put them at right now at an 83.87 save percentage. And that'll do it for our Keys of the Game, presented by CMHISaki.com. Looking forward to tomorrow, Reagan. We will return for the final game of this weekend series and the final game of the season series between Florida Golf Coast and Central Michigan before a potential national championship run from both squads. We may see them end up in St. Louis. But for that game, it'll be on... on um, January 22nd. That game is set for an 8.30 yeah. p.m. puck drop. You can listen to that live for the pregame show at an 8.05 broadcast. It'll be Reagan Cleves on the play-by-play -play call for that. Myself on the color for tomorrow. Reagan will be on the headline preview show tomorrow as well. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, Reagan, before we head out of here, what an excellent night of, yeah. of hockey we've seen today. And, and I think tomorrow's going to be even more fun. Yeah, as always, it was great working with you, Devin. You had a good call, and it's Pleasure working, especially this is such a great game here tonight. And if, if this is any preview for tomorrow, we're in for a show tomorrow. Absolutely. So with that, we'd like to thank all of our production crew here, Joe Laser, on doing all the social media and Instagram content work, as well as Twitter. We'd like to thank our photographer, Tristan Hagenstein, for all the great photos this weekend of the team and media personnel. My color commentator, Reagan Cleves, for today's game. And myself, Devin Sarah, thanking you all for listening to this edition of Central Michigan Hockey here on CCHN. We'll be back tomorrow for an 8.05 broadcast here, once again from the Hertz Arena here in Estero, Florida. So for everyone at CCHN, and the team, the players, and the parents and fans, thank you all for listening in to this edition of Central Michigan Hockey 